7.50 a.m. Splash is waiting in the hallway. Hey, Splash. Here comes Simba. I don't see Boo outside. It is 8.30 a.m. I'm just getting dressed right now and there's Boo, he's hanging out in the bushes. Let's see how he looks, he's still moving slow. He saw me in the window and he hears me, hey Boo! Hello Boo! So, um, yeah, he's looking stiff and slow. I'll, I'll bring you some food in a minute, Boo, okay? Okay? All right, now I gotta go feed him. But first, I have to finish getting dressed. It is 8.44 a.m. I'm bringing Boo some food. Today, they're getting the Nature's Variety Instinct Chicken Pate. How are you, Boo? I mean, he does look a little bit more uh, stable on the leg. You know, not a whole lot. He's still moving slow. How you doing, Boo? Hello. Do you hear him say hello? Hello. Hello, Boo. You okay? Are you feeling any better? His fur is, like, rough. Considering I just brushed him yesterday. How you doing, Boo? You good boy? You good boy, Boo? Have you noticed that when you talk to cats, you always have to, like, raise your voice super high? Because they talk super high. Meow. Hey, Boo. He's doing his little rub all around me routine. Then he goes to the food. Okay, so now that he's eating, eat your food, Boo. Eat your food. I'm gonna go give this to Hydrox. And there's Hydrox, and here's here's his bowl, and it looks like maybe some raccoons got to it or something. So my little stool is exactly where I left it yesterday, so I'm gonna sit down and I'm gonna brush Boo for a little bit, just because he likes it so much, and it makes him happy, and maybe it'll make him feel better. I just realized that the corner of that tent is like wedged under the chair, which is a good thing. That way the tent's not gonna like blow away. I brush him and he walks behind me and then he comes back around. I don't want him walking around on that leg though. So, Boo, lay down, lay down, lay down, lay down, lay down, lay down, lay down Boo. And this is the leg. It looks okay. I'm gonna just very gently brush it. Lay down. Stop walking around. Lay down. Lay down and relax. Lay down and relax, boo. Okay? Lay down and relax. Or eat your food. You have two choices. Eat your food or lay down and relax. Got it? Well, I mean, he's, he's definitely walking around a lot more today than yesterday. You know, he's still a little bit out of sorts, but not as much as yesterday. Right, Bo? Feeling a little bit better? Yeah, a little bit better. He's headbutting my legs. Look at this. This is like a new thing. Okay, now he's gonna lay down. You gonna lay down there? Good boy. Good boy, Boo. Okay, so let's look at how he rolls around. Cause I noticed like, like yesterday he was really babying that leg, even when he was rolling around. So today, he, it looks like he might have a little bit better mobility than yesterday. 
I mean, if we see him, if he scratches himself with this leg, like if he scratches his neck with it, then he's obviously doing a lot better because yesterday, like I noticed he wanted to do that and he didn't do it. Yep. Like, he rolled over okay there. Again, I just want to be super gentle around that area. Hello, Boop. Okay, Boop. Good boy, Boop. I'm going to put his towel on the ground again. Not that he necessarily used it, or maybe I would put the towel under there on his mat, but he likes the mat, so maybe I'll just put the towel next to the mat. Okay, boo. Maybe I'll put the towel under here in like that little circle. Okay, boo. You gonna eat your food? I'm trying to show you guys his face because he looks so happy when he's being brushed. purring. Looks like he's smiling, right? He likes having his face brushed. Did you see that? I was trying to like brush near his eyes. He loved it. Okay, that's, this is not the leg, but I just want to see what would happen if I tried to brush his paw. Okay, boo. Okay, he looks very nice. So that is the leg that's been giving him issues. Okay, so I brushed him for about seven minutes. Now I'm gonna go inside, boo. I gotta go inside, boo. Okay, got a big day today, very big day today. A long schedule. There's his leg. Okay, it looks like it's most likely a sprain or something. Maybe he jammed it, so. Okay, boo. I want you to eat your food, eat your food, and relax today. Today's another rest day for you, okay? Another rest day for you, okay? You rest today. Today's a rest day. He's gonna go back to his food. When I go inside, he'll finish off the food. That's what he does. Okay, so this is what I just did. I took the plastic basket that was outside that really wasn't being used and I put his blue towel in it and um, I'm gonna just put it here it's between this little stool so that gives him protection on this side um, and there's this chair I can't do it under the chair there's not enough room there's his other um, mat that he likes to lay on and so this is kind of between the table, the stool, and two of the chairs. So he should feel a bit of protection here. I could actually even move the stool over a little bit more. And um, this will definitely give him some place 
uh, comfortable to um, curl up and lay in so we could see if he likes that. This is what Stella and the kittens used to use when they were outside, these little plastic baskets that are the perfect size for a cat bed. So then when they came inside and they saw the baskets, they um, they automatically used them because they had already used them outside. So um, yeah, so this will be Boo's little portable bed right now. He sucked up all the liquid near that food, all of it. Is he gonna check out the bed? Go in the bed, Boo. Go in your bed. Well, he's stretching out that leg a little bit more than he did yesterday. Like, I didn't see him doing that yesterday at all. Go in your bed, Boo. What do you guys think? Should I put a little bit of catnip in there so he'll go in? You know, now I'm starting to wonder if Boo is getting all these injuries just because he likes the extra attention. His claws are getting caught in the toe. You go lay down in the bed. Go lay down in a little bed. I made you a little bed. Go lay in it. Okay? I'm going to put this under the table. Okay? Put that under the table. It's not supposed to rain, but just in case. Everything I do here always has an audience. Boo just walked up the steps. Boo, don't walk up and down steps. Okay? Alright, this is why I want to just go inside. Don't walk up and down steps. Go lay in your little new bed that I gave you and eat your food, okay? Go relax. You have food and you have a bed, okay? Go lay down. I'll see you later, okay? I just walked into my living room. This is what I saw. This is new. Splashy has never done this before. Simba's sleeping on the bed right now. How you doing, Simba? Are you sleeping? Relaxing? Relaxing? Okay, right now it is 4.16 p.m. And I'm feeding Boo because I'm not going to be here at his normal feeding time. So I just came back early just to put some fresh food out for him. And um, yeah, so I also wanted to give him those herb drops to help him, help him heal. How you doing, Boo? Where were you laying? Where were you hanging out? Hmm? Huh? Okay, he did not eat his breakfast. I mean, he took all the liquid out of it, which is good. So he has turkey Sheba for his dinner, and he should like that because that's his like favorite food. Sheba tends to be his favorite food, whether it's chicken or turkey. Okay, let's watch him stretch with the back legs. Is he gonna stretch the back legs? I want to see him stretch the back legs. Stretch your back legs. Okay, well. He seems to be doing a little bit better. He's still not his usual self. Okay, I just petted him for a little while, and now he's eating his food. For me, the most important thing is that he licks up all the liquid because I put the herb drops in it. And this is Hydrox's plate. I'm going to give this to him. Now, most of Hydrox's food um, from before has been eaten, but look at all these ants. Oh my God, you guys see that? There's so many ants on the side of the dish. Here's the ant bait. And then like here are all the ants. So now I gotta squash all these damn ants. Okay, boo, I'll see you later. 
See, he really likes this food. He had all the liquid and he ate most of the food right now. I'll see you later, boo, okay? Be a good boy. I'll see you later. 4.35 p.m. Boo ate all of his food. And that's like half of a can of the Sheba turkey. Hey, boo. He really likes Sheba. I'm not going to give him any more right now because I have to get out of here. Okay, boo, there's some dry food in the feeder, okay? Okay? Take it easy. I'll see you later, maybe. Maybe I'll see you later. I'm not going to be home probably until like 10 o'clock, okay? All right, I'll see you later, boo. The inside cats just ate their food also. There's only like a few nuggets left on their platter. It is about 11 p.m. And I just got home. I parked in the driveway. I walked through the patio. And I did not see Boo anywhere. He did not come out to greet me. I don't know where he is. It is 8.45 a.m. I'm getting a late start today. And here's Simba sitting in the window. And there's Boo sitting under the patio table. It's not focusing on him. Instead, it's focusing on the screen. But I see him there. Hey, Boo. Good morning, Boo. It is 9.26 a.m. And Boo is laying on the black cat doormat. I don't know if you guys can see him through the door. So maybe he's starting to act like himself again. The boys are in the window. It is 9.50 a.m. And Boo is still laying on the black cat doormat, so that's a good thing. I am going to put some food together for him. I'm not opening the door yet because... I'm just trying to minimize his movements. If I open the door, he's going to move around more than if I just wait until the food's ready and then open the door, so. Good morning, Boo. How you doing? You okay? You okay, Boo? Okay. Okay. How you doing? I want to see him, you see? Okay, see how he's stretching? When he's stretching his back legs, it's that, that one back leg, his left back leg, um, that he's not fully stretching out. So that's how I know that there's some kind of issue going on with him. Hey, boop. He's friendly today. Like he feels okay. Hopefully he'll be hungry and he'll eat his food. This is the Nature's Variety Instinct um, venison. This is the first time I've ever fed them the venison meal. It came as part of a variety pack. If he doesn't eat it, then uh, he's going to get um, sheep. Look at the. Okay, so look. He must be feeling a little bit better because he's going up on the table like that. Okay, Boo, let me move this down. Now they both have exactly the same meal except Hydrox had some dry food on his. So I'm just gonna let Boo eat what he wants to and then whatever's left over, I'm just gonna give to Hydrox, whether it's this plate or Boo's plate. And what's weird is that there's absolutely no food in this feeder. And the feeder was supposed to go off at like 6 a.m. But what I did notice the other day is that it's still dark out at 6 a.m. So I definitely want to change the feeder time to 7 a.m. Because um, I don't want the feeder to dispense food when it's still dark out because then potentially raccoons, possums, and stuff like that could get the food. So while Boo is eating, I'm just going to sit here on this little stool because I don't want to do anything that's going to disturb him. Like I'm not going to refill that feeder yet. And um, I'm not going to water the plants. I just don't want to do anything that might freak him out. So that's what Boo did to the food. He ate up all the liquid and he ate the dry food and he ate a little bit of the wet food. How you doing, Boo? Huh? How you doing? You don't feel too good? Huh? 
He still looks like a little bit unsteady on that back leg. You hurt your leg, boo? Oh, sorry. You hurt your leg, boo? How'd you hurt it? How did you hurt your leg? Huh? Jumping? Landing? What did you do to it? I mean, it looks fine to me. I don't see any areas that are swollen or anything. I gave him some more dry food because he just seems to be wanting dry food. So I'll let him eat that. Okay, so the reason that there is no food in the bowl is because this feeder had a malfunction. It says F01 on the screen. And it has had this malfunction once before. And it was when some food got jammed inside of the conveyor mechanism. So that means I have to take this out and unjam it. Okay, so since Boo ate out of the blue bowl, I'm gonna give this one to Hydrox. Hydrox is laying under the car right now. So I'll give Hydrox the nice shiny bowl. So hopefully he'll eat that fast before the ants get to it. Okay guys, so I noticed that the back of his leg is swollen. I just saw that for the first time. Um, it's like the inside of the back leg there. Can you guys see that? It's swollen. I don't know if it's like an abscess or, or what he did to it, but it's like right, it's like right inside the back of his leg. Do you see it? That's the swollen part. Right there. Okay. Right there, it's swollen. He is looking fairly mobile on it. It's right there. That's where it's swollen. I don't want to touch it because I don't want to freak him out. But it is like right on that joint. So it could be a sprain or something. It is 11.49 a.m. Boo's hanging out under the table. You stay there, Boo. Stay there. And um, I'm going to my office. And I'm just going to the office so I could pick up uh, my computer there. And then I'm going to come back and I'm going to work from home the rest of the day. I made an appointment for Boo at the vet for 6 p.m. They're able to take me today. So that means when I come back home with my computer, in addition to getting work done, I need to um, clean out that inside room that I started organizing. Um, just because the vet said that they might need to give Boo some sedatives to look at his leg. And um, I'm not going to bring him back and then just put him outside in the patio while he's under any kind of sedation. I don't think that's safe to do at night. So. Um, that's what I need to do. I also need to get him into that carrier before 5 p.m. I need to give myself like an hour to get him to the vet just because I don't know if there's going to be traffic or what. Um, so that's my plan. I have to run to my office, pick up my computer, have a quick meeting um, with some of the people that work there. Um, I need to then come back, uh, get some work done, clean out that room, and uh, get Boo into the carrier. So hopefully, hopefully I could do that. I told the vet that chances are like 80% that I could get him into the carrier. Um, and they, they understand that if I can't get him in, um, what the deal is, they're also, okay Boo, so you take it easy. Just hang out here, okay? I'll see you later. It's 12.50 right now. I just got back and Boo's hanging out on the patio. Stay there, Boo, stay. 
Good boy, boo. I want you to relax, okay? Go relax in the shade somewhere, okay? Okay, boo. We're gonna go. We're gonna go to the cat club. We're gonna go to the cat club later, okay? So I need you to be a good boy. Be a good boy, and we'll go to the cat club. I'm gonna put this right here in the shade, okay, boo? You gonna hang out? Hang out inside your carrier? Wanna hang out inside your carrier? Okay, boo. Be a good boy, boo, okay? I'm gonna go clean out the car, okay? I'm cleaning out the car. We're gonna take a ride in the car. We're gonna take a ride in the car and go to the kitty cat club, okay? That's what I call the VET. I call it the kitty cat club. Okay, boo, hang out. Just hang out. Just relax. Yeah, hang out there. Okay, I am bringing boo a little bowl of fresh water with ice cubes. Okay, want some water? Drink the water. I drink the water. I don't want to brush him right now, and I don't want to play with him right now. I just want him to relax and rest. And also, I'm going to um, use brushing as a way of enticing him into the carrier later. You stay, Boo. You stay. You hang out. Okay? Come here, Boo. See, when I pet him, he, like, wants to walk around me. I don't want him walking around. I want you just hanging out, boo. Just hang out, okay? I know it's hot today. He's purring right now. I know it's hot today, boo. Okay? Yeah, just hang out. Just hang out. Be a good boy. I'm going to put the towel... I'll put a towel up to block some sun, okay? Okay? And so you just hang here. Hang out. Drink some water. Yeah, we're gonna go in the carrier later. We can go for a ride in the carrier later. Let me take the leaves out. Okay, so I just draped the other blue towel across those chairs like that where sun was coming in. So that way he has a lot more shade and it's a lot cooler for him. Right, Boo? You're just gonna hang out here, okay? Just hang out here for a while. I'm gonna go for a ride later. We go in the car. I'm gonna go to the kitty cat club. Okay, boo. We're gonna have go meet some nice people that like cats. They like cats, boo. They like you. Okay? Alright, boo, you hang out. He's definitely really not his normal self right now. Let me move the water over. Move the water over for you. You want some water? Yeah, there he goes. Good. And the water, um, it's filtered water. It's like in a Brita type pitcher. And it's been sitting on the counter for like 24 hours. Good boy, boo. Drink your water. Drink your water, boo. So here's what I did. I just took this old hand towel. Um, it's clean. It's a yellow towel and I wet it all down with cold water. I wrung it out and then right now there's a bunch of ice cubes in the middle of it wrapped up. I'm gonna go put this outside near Boo. Um, just in case he's feeling feverish. I don't want to scare him with it. I'm not gonna make him lay on top of it or anything. I'm not gonna put it on top of him. I just want to put it near him so if he wants to if he wants to like lay his head on it or something, he can do that. Maybe he'll get like a cool breeze off of it. Wanna feel this? Feel it? Feels cool? Does it feel cool, boo? Hmm? Okay. I'm just gonna lay here. Leave that there. Leave it there. Okay. Well, you hang out with it. Hang out with it, boo. You could, you could touch it. You could lay down next to it. Okay, he's putting his paw on it. It's definitely cooler down there on the cement. But I'll leave that there anyway. It's hot today, and it's humid today, and the thermostat says it is 83 degrees inside. I have all the windows open. I don't have the AC on. 
just because I want to keep the windows open in case I hear anything outside. If I put the AC on um, between the AC and then the closed windows, I'm not going to be able to hear um, what's going on with Boo. It's 3 p.m. I just scooped out some litter. I'm taking it to the garbage and here's Boo under the table. He's looking a little bit slow and unsteady a little bit. I don't want him following me to the garbage. Okay, Boo, you stay here, okay? You stay here, Boo. Yeah, you're a good boy. We're gonna go for a ride in the car later. Yeah, we're gonna go for a car ride later. Okay? Okay, Boo, you hang out. Okay? Hang out and rest, okay? What you doing, silly? Good oh, silly boy. Hello, Boop. You're a nice boy, Boop. It's hot out. I know, it's hot out. Stay cool. Stay cool under the patio. I think he moves because there's some sun coming in now. The sun has moved. Okay. Okay. Okay, right now it is 4.30 and I am going to start getting this carrier ready. I have this little piece of like plush uh, blanket that I'm going to use. Um, I got this at the Dollar Tree, of course, and I bought a bunch for the inside cats. They have it in their little beds inside now. So um, I rubbed this all over me, and then I'm going to put this in the carrier. Hey, boo. Check that out. So I have the carrier ready. I uh, cleaned it out, uh, and I put that nice soft little blanket in there. I put a toy in there. I'm going to go uh, get a brush and um, maybe his other toy. And here's Hydrox. This is like a joke. Hydrox is just hanging out on the patio, watching Boo. Boo, come on. Want me to brush you? Come on. Come on. Let's go. In here, come on. Brush you? Okay, he just wants to stare at Hydrox, which is not good, look. Even the brush isn't working. Okay, I'm gonna have to shoo Hydrox away. Because nothing's gonna work. Okay, he just wants to lay down. You know that's not like Boo, not to want to be brushed. Okay, I'm gonna have to make Hydrox leave. Go ahead, Hydrox, you're gonna have to leave, honey. You're gonna have to leave for now, okay? Okay? For now, you have to leave, okay? Because we gotta take Boo. We gotta take Boo. It's okay. You got food right here. Look, over here. Right here. There's food. Wow, I can't believe he's not like running away from me. Okay, so I just took the feather toy out. And I'm just gonna wave this around and see if I could get him in, in the carrier with this. in there.
Okay, so right now it's 4.49 p.m. I actually took out this other carrier that I have. I only have the two carriers. Um, so I took out this other carrier, it's bigger, and I threw some treats in there, and Boo actually walked all the way in to get the treats. The only thing that was sticking out was his tail. So I went and I shut uh, the door on it, but he freaked out and he managed to like totally just shoot out of the carrier. He moved pretty fast considering like his leg is bothering him. Um, so. Then I tried getting him back in this carrier so far. I've tried brushes and I've tried toys and he's just not going. I think this cat is too smart. Um, so now I'm trying both of these carriers. It's like 85 degrees out. It is so humid. I am sweating to death and I want to get him into one of these carriers within the next uh, 20 minutes and take him to go get checked out. Right now he's just sitting there grooming himself. The hard part is that because he's not, you know, feeling 100% himself, so he's not as playful as he usually is, so that's why I'm having a much harder time getting him into one of these things. Right now it is about 5.10 p.m. and I still can't get this cat in any of the carriers. He like wore himself out. Um, I've been using like this toy to kind of lure him in and uh, that's not working. I've been using the brush to lure him in. I've been using this toy to lure him in. I've been using this brush to lure him in. I have been using treats to lure him in. And I even got some catnip and put some catnip in there. I don't know if you guys can see that. And he went so far as like his front legs in there, uh, but he's not putting his back legs in there. And because his back leg is like, swollen and it's the one he's been limping on I don't want to like jam it in there like I don't want to like push him in there and then just damage the leg more or you know do something to it again this carrier he walked all the way into except for his tail was sticking out and when I tried to shut the door he freaked out and he flew out of it in like lightning speed now one thing that I did notice while he was laying here is that um, he has more mobility with the injured leg than he did a few days ago. So a few days ago I noticed, or maybe yesterday, um, it was either yesterday or the day before, I noticed that when he tried to use the hind leg to kind of like uh, itch himself, um, he really didn't move it at all. Like he would try, he would move it like maybe an inch and that would be it. And then today he did move the hind leg, I would say maybe like half of its normal uh, length. If he was normally going to scratch his neck with the hind leg, he probably moved it about halfway, which is greater mobility than the other day. So that could mean that he's um, getting better. I don't know. It's just weird because I have not noticed any swelling until today. And I was looking for the swelling. It's just, yeah, I don't know. I don't know if it was there and I didn't see it. I tried looking at previous video footage and I really can't make it out from the video footage. So, I mean, I don't know. Right now he looks like he wants to sleep and I literally have like 10 minutes to try to get him into a carrier to get him to the vet before uh, the appointment. And if I can't do that, I'm gonna have to call them and then cancel. Okay, so I called the vet and I told them that there's no way he's going in a carrier and I had to cancel the appointment. And they were very nice about it, so that was cool. And they wanted to know if I wanted to reschedule and I said, well, at this time, I really don't want to because I don't know how much more success I'll have getting him in a carrier anytime soon. So they told me that um, basically um, if and when I do get him in a carrier to give them a call and they'll be able to squeeze him in as far as an appointment goes. It is 6 p.m. right now and Boo is going to get his favorite food, which is the turkey Sheba. I put some drops in here, so I'm actually using the parasite formula again because... Um, it's supposed to also be good for infections and abscesses. Um, and he did really well on that, so I'm putting him back on that along with some adrenal formula um, to remove stress levels. So um, they're both, both him and Hydrox are getting the same thing. It is 6.40, and I just came out to hang out with Boo for a little bit. There's his food, so he ate all the liquid, and he ate probably half of the food. 
And right now he's just walking around. Hopefully he'll eat the rest of the food. So I was doing some research on his leg um, because he's not going to a vet today and they said that if it was broken or dislocated he would not be walking on it, he would not be putting pressure on it. Um, and then they had a lot of information about abscesses but from what I see the swelling is actually on a joint so because of that it could be a sprain. Um, it's not necessarily an abscess. Usually if uh, the swelling is not actually on a joint, then uh, you know it's an abscess, but this was like right on the joint. So I don't know. Again, there's nothing to do right now. It's just kind of watch it and see what happens. So that's his normal leg and that is his swollen leg. And it's just slightly more swollen, like from here and here and here and here you could see how this section is more swollen and then like inside here is where you could see more swelling look look at this look okay so he was not able to do that just like the other day even earlier today he was not able to do that so to me that's an indication that his leg is healing because he's able to do that now. He has more mobility in that leg. Good sign, right? He just ate more of his food, and now he's in the feeder eating dry food. Notice both of his back legs are out. The other day, the uh, injured leg um, was kind of like up in the air more. We were just gonna hang out, right? We're just gonna hang out here. It's so like right about here is where there's a bit of swelling. Like honestly, who knows what he did with it? I mean, the way this cat jumps up and down so high and everything, he could have been jumping on it and. Who knows what? Hey boo! I just went inside for like a minute and Boo watched me the whole time. And then he watched me until I sat down. Now that I sat down, then he's happy again. He likes it when I just hang out with him. Boo, let's just hang out, okay? Okay, boo. Okay. Who just wants to rest. Okay, I'm just about to go inside. I've been sitting here petting Boo like a gazillion times. He loves it. Hey, right, Boo. Okay, Boo, I'm gonna go in. I'm gonna go inside. It's getting dark, okay? I want you to go rest and relax. Go lay down somewhere safe. And I want you to rest. Okay, boo. You rest and get good night's sleep. Get good sleep. Good sleep. I know you don't want me to go in. I know. But it's getting dark. And I'm getting all bit up by bugs. Okay? You'll be okay. Hey, 
His fur feels better than the other day. I mean, it's a lot softer. I feel like his, like, energy is a little bit better. Okay, boo, you hang out. You hang out. I'm going to go in. Okay? I'll see you tomorrow. So this is what the table looks like. It's pretty much a mess. Uh, it has those two uh, blue towels on it um, that I put on there earlier to block the sun. So he had a lot of shade underneath it. I'm just going to leave him there. Um, overnight, he could, st you know, he could sleep under that table if he wants to. Maybe I'll give him a little extra protection or something. He honestly doesn't look like he's limping as much as he was the other day, but I do see the swelling, and I am so itchy right now. It's like ridiculous. The bottom of my feet, my arms, everything. It is 7:45, and Boo's hanging out on the patio by the steps. That's kind of just where I left him. So it's good that he's just hanging out and not getting himself into any kind of trouble. It is 8.37 p.m. and Boo is still curled up there on the bottom of the steps, sleeping. He's changed positions a few times, but he's still sleeping there. It's like 9.20 right now. I saw Boo got up. And then I was watching him from the window. He saw me, so I decided to just come out and pet him for a little bit. Right, Boo? Yeah. Get some rest, Boo. Go lay in your apartment. How come you don't lay in your apartment anymore? You don't want to go in your apartment? Go in your apartment, Boo. I'm trying to show you guys how it's swollen, but it's hard because I have to get a shot from of him from behind. And see what he does? He's like, really? He doesn't want me to do that. I don't want to take him inside right now. Like, I was thinking maybe I should just try to bring him inside. But the thing is, if he gets freaked out inside, you know, like when a cat gets freaked out, they want to run and, you know, I just... I think he could make the leg worse. I mean, I saw how how he shot out of that carrier today when I tried to close the door on it. I mean, he flew out of it. And, um, you know, I don't need him doing more of that. He really needs to just, like, rest his legs. Right, Boo? You need to rest. Yeah, you need to rest. Okay. You don't want to lay up here? You could lay over here. You want to lay over here? Lay under the chair. Lay under the chair, boo. I don't think that would be good for you under the chair. Right? You could lay on your black cat doormat. Right? Yeah. Okay. Boo, you got houses to go in. You got all kinds of cat houses to go in. Okay, can you guys see? See the swollen area? Okay, Boo. Okay. Okay, boo. Gonna lay here? Yeah, you could lay here. This is good. You could lay up here, boo. You can lay up here. That's nice. Yeah, you go sleep here. Sleep here. 
I want you to sleep up here, okay? Yeah. You sleep there. You be nice. That's a good spot, boo, okay? Yep. Okay. We'll see you later. You have a good night, boo. Have a good night, boo. Okay? Now, don't fall. Don't fall. You just sleep there, okay? Don't fall down any steps or nothing. You just sleep there. It is 7.30 a.m. and Boo is hanging out on these mats that are kind of like on Hydrox's side of the patio. And I was watching some security camera footage from the other day, like when I was away, um, for like a day and a half. And then um, Boo was acting weird. And quite a few times in that footage, he like walked across the patio toward like, let's just call it Hydrox's side of the patio or toward the bushes. Like he was hunting something or going after something. So I don't know if he got in a fight. I don't know if he like twisted his ankle or what. How you doing, boo? Hello, good morning. He's still, he's still acting weird. There's Simba in the window. Hey, boo. It is 8 a.m. and Simba is laying in the window. And Boo is right outside under that chair. Do you see? He's under the aqua chair. They've been kind of talking to each other through the window. I just got out of the shower. I'm getting dressed and I'm determined to get that cat into a carrier today and off to the vet. It is 8.28 a.m. and I'm just about to go outside and see Boo. And I've been watching some videos this morning on how to move a cat by holding them by the scruff of the neck. Oh, look, there is a cricket right there under the chair. Um, and I don't like how Boo's been like moving in slow motion today and stuff like that. He looks unsteady. So I want to get him into a carrier. Plan A is to try this scruff carry technique to get him into one of the carriers that I have now. If that does not work, plan B is to run up to PetSmart or Petco and buy one of the top loading carriers and try uh, moving him into that. And so those are, that's plan A and that is plan B. I want to get this cat to the vet today. How are you, boo? Are you feeling okay? You don't feel okay. You don't feel good, hmm? Yeah, I know. Feeling weak. Okay. Wait, we're gonna go in here, okay? Go in, we're gonna go in here? Go in the carrier? Put a towel in there? We go in there? Wanna go in there? Here. Go in. Go inside. Go in the carrier. Come on. Yep. Gonna go in the carrier, boo. Right now I'm putting it there like that because I want to be able to just kind of lift him up and put him in there. The other thing I want to do is I'm gonna go get a Kong toy, that feather Kong toy. I don't know where the one is that was outside, but I have another one. It was a two pack. I'm gonna put that inside. Okay guys, it was a successful day. It literally took less than two minutes to get Boo in the carrier. I used the scruff of the neck technique and I have to thank the Community Cats channel. So if you guys have not already seen that channel, go to the Community Cats channel. I'll put a link to their channel in the description below this video. She did an excellent video on how to pick up a cat and move a feral cat um, by using this technique that I just used. And I could not film it because I had to use both hands when I did it. But um, I have to thank you so much for that video because I watched that video this morning. I also watched another video called How to Scruff a Cat after I watched the Community Cats video. But um, definitely check out her channel if you're not already subscribed to her channel. Boo is safely in the carrier. Um, he didn't really put up a fight at all. I just scruffed him and dumped him in there. Right now I'm going to call the vet and going to... Uh, 
set up a time for me to bring him over there. So here's Boo. He's sitting very nicely in the carrier. He's like in his little loaf position. And I am now going to take him over to the vet. They said I could bring him by, drop him off. And they will take a look at him today. I know you're not happy, Boo, but we're going to go for a ride in the car, okay? Yeah, you be a good boy. Just relax. I don't mind if he even just lays in this carrier for a few hours just because it's it's just rest for him. He could just completely rest. Um, I feel like he hasn't gotten a whole lot of sleep lately. So I'm going to take one of the blue towels and put it over the carrier um, when it's in the car so he doesn't get freaked out. But um, right now we are just going to take a ride over to the vet. Here's Boo in the car. I'm stopped at a red light right now and he's been pretty vocal I've been talking to him the whole time and yeah I'm sorry if the car sounds really loud it it's an old car and it does sound really loud so okay so boo is doing much better than splash did in the carrier like splash's eyes were all big and he was totally freaking out well he was super super scared and for the most part boo's calm and his eyes look normal he is you know vocalizing a little bit it is 10 19 a.m now that boo is safely at the vet let's talk about getting cats into carriers especially feral cats or formerly feral cats or just cats that don't like going into carriers so let's talk about Simba. Um, the first time I put Simba in a carrier was when he went to the vet to get fixed and he literally walked into the carrier on its own. It's the same carrier that has been outside with Boo. And I used a toy um, to lure him into the carrier. He walked into the carrier. All four of his legs and his tail were in the carrier and all I needed to do was shut the door. It was that easy. And because since then, Simba loves being picked up. As far as like all the cats go, he has no problem being picked up. And he's the easiest to put in the carrier. I just pick him up, put him in, shut the door, no problem. So he's really simple. So let's talk about Stella. Now the first time Stella was in a carrier was the same exact morning that Simba was in a carrier. They both went to get it fixed together. And it was a little bit more difficult getting Stella into the carrier. I had to use the uh, towel um, trick where you basically, you take a towel and you wrap the cat up in the towel and that kind of um, restrains them. And then you put them into the carrier. Now I used a larger carrier for Stella and I was able to put the carrier upright on its side and then lower Stella into the carrier rear end first and get her in that way. I'll show you guys what I'm talking about. So this is the carrier and this is how I get Stella into this carrier. I put it on its side like this. I make it stand upright so that um, the opening is up top. I then pick Stella up. Now I don't have to use a towel anymore. I could just pick her up with my hands, but that first time I had to use the towel to kind of restrain her. Um, I pick her up and then I lower her rear end in this way and then I lower the rest of her in and then I'm able to shut the door and put the carrier on its side. Um, and it's really easy. Now when I use the towel, I also left the towel in there with her. Look who had to come see what I'm doing. They had to follow me to the patio and look out the window. Now for Splash, I had to use the technique where you kind of um, corner the cat into a small space. So I used this bathroom. Um, I was able to get Splash into this bathroom. I shut the door uh, behind him so it was just the two of us in this bathroom. And then he ran into this shower area where I have the two litter boxes. And he actually um, like laid down like right here and he would not move. He was like petrified. Um, so I also had the carrier in the room with me and I needed to figure out a way to calm him down and also to get him from here into the carrier. So I spent quite a bit of time, um, you know, petting him, talking to him, trying to calm him down. And then eventually, um, I was able to pick him up from here and move him into the carrier. I just did it as quickly as possible. I don't remember if I used like a smaller towel or what I might have used um, like a smaller towel on him also, but 
I was able to do it that way. And so for him, I had to um, corner him into a smaller space and then from there get him into the carrier. I just gave Hydrox some food on the patio. He was walking around looking for some food and he was meowing, so I figured I'd give him some food there. That's his spot. Stella's in the window. All the cats are, you know, very concerned about Boo. Uh, they witnessed me put him in the carrier. Um, they were all watching from the window, so I know they're wondering what's going on. I'll see you later, Stella, okay? Be a good girl today, okay? You're in charge of all the cats in the house, okay? It is 5.45 p.m. I just picked Boo up from the vet's office, and he's still on sedatives, medication, and his eyes are all big. I've been driving about 10 or 15 minutes already, and Boo has been completely quiet. He hasn't made a peep. Right now, it is 7.07 .07 p.m., and Boo came home. He's been in his carrier, and he's been a really good boy so far. I don't want to jinx anything, but since he got in the car and since he got home, he has not even made a sound. He's been like really quiet. And um, I don't know if it's because of the sedatives or just because he's scared. Um, when I picked him up at the vet's office and when we first um, took the towel off to kind of look at him, see how he was doing, he did cry a few times. But since then he has not um, made a sound. So I have him just sitting here calmly and peacefully in his carrier. He's been in this uh, carrier maybe 20 minutes now inside this room. So this is just um, a small spare room that I have for him. They want him to be inside for three days. So this is going to be really interesting um, because usually when feral cats first come inside, they wanna go out. Um, like the first night, Usually, you know, three, four, five o'clock in the morning, they're really trying to get out of the house. I don't know if it's gonna be different um, because Boo um, does have some sedatives and painkillers in him. So this is going to be an interesting experiment. What the vet told me was that they found a wound on his back leg. Um, it looks like it was a bite wound or a puncture wound and they shaved his leg down um, to clean it out and they found some other scars there so they said that was not the first fight that he's ever been in and like obviously we know that um, so they said that it looks like that the wound had gotten infected but they really didn't have much to drain out of the wound there was no pus in the wound they think that the wound had ruptured itself a few days ago I did tell them that I've been watching this cat very closely for the past three days or possibly four days and that I have not seen any signs of an open wound. I've not seen any like pus or seepage or anything of any kind and that like you know I've been videotaping his leg basically looking for any signs of uh, infections, wounds, swelling, anything like that. So they thought it was like really weird that I didn't see anything but so they cleaned out the wound. He does have a fever of 105, so they did administer some antibiotic injections. They say the antibiotics will stay in his system for two weeks. And um, they also gave him a painkiller. It's a three-day painkiller. It's the same one that the other cats had when they were fixed. He also was given a sedative in the office today so they could work on him. Um, they said because he still has a lot of feral tendencies and he was very, very scared uh, when they were trying to interact with him. What I'm fine with that, um, with giving him a sedative, um, especially now that he's going to be inside for a few days. I even asked them if I could give him more of a sedative just to try to keep him calm, but they don't want any more drugs in his system than there already are. Um, they also found some fleas on him, obviously because he's been living outside and they gave him Capstar for the fleas. Um, that is something that he took internally. I think it might have been an injection, and they say that kills all of the fleas that are on him, and they also gave me some Revolution to put on the back of his neck in a few days, and that will also um, kill more fleas for like 30 days, and 
The other thing is they give him an anti-inflammatory. Uh, they gave him one today, like around 4 or 5 p.m. And they gave me two more. Um, one to give him to him tomorrow with his dinner. And another one to give to him the next day with his dinner. I do have a whole list of, like, the names of everything. And, um... I'm just trying to remember everything that they told me. I think that's pretty much it. So they want me to keep a watch on him. They say if he continues to look wobbly, it's obviously, uh, it could be because of the fever. It could also be um, because of the swelling until the swelling goes down. Um, so they think everything should be fine. And they do want me to bring him back like after two weeks. And I told them that I couldn't make any promises there. I'm just going to have to take one day at a time and see how this goes. You know, I don't know. If I'm going to be able to get him back in another carrier again. Um, so that was it. Uh, the total vet bill came to $372. So it was a bit pricey. But of course, vet visits usually are. I'm thinking I might try to crowdfund that amount. Um, if anyone wants to contribute to Boo's vet bill, um, I'm going to put something on the Lucky Ferrell's website uh, where you can do that, and I'll put a link to it in the description below this video. Um, so that was today's eventful day. The other thing that I did was stop in Petco on the way home, and I picked up this brand new scratching post. Um, I got a good deal. It's $29.99. It's really tall and I liked it because it has um, this rotating top and it has two toys with feathers on it um, that rotate. So I thought Boo would really like that and he needs to be confined to this room for the next three days and I'm just going to try to make it comfortable for him. And I'm going to try to see if I could keep him in this room for three days. Because all the other cats, um, I think Splash lasted the longest in this room. He did about 24 hours in this room. Uh, everyone else just kind of wanted to get out after a few hours. So um, let's hope Boo is better. The other thing that I did was I uh, brought his play mat inside. So he has something familiar um, that he recognizes. I also brought this plastic tub inside. This is uh, like the plastic cat bed that I had inside for him. I put a fresh towel in it. Um, so he has some place um, soft and comfy to lay. I'm gonna put this in uh, a corner of the room. And then I also uh, brought in his two favorite wand toys. So he has the one wand toy with the feathers on the end and the other wand toy with like those wiggly worm things. He does have um, the Kong toy with feathers. It is still in the carrier. Um, and I'm just gonna keep him in the carrier for a little while longer. It's 716 right now. I'm definitely keeping him in the carrier till 730. I just want him to chill out and relax. He's had a very big day. He's safe in the carrier. And I'm gonna go put some food together for him. I already brought in some water. There is a litter box in this room. And I'm going to get myself situated um, because I will be spending a lot of time in this room with Boo right now. Uh, I might even be sleeping in this room with him. I don't know yet. I'm just going to go get some stuff that I need. Maybe I'll bring in my laptop so I could do some work. And I just want to, um, you know, hang out with him, just kind of get him feeling comfortable and of course all the other cats the other three cats right now are downstairs i have the door shut i want to try to keep them down there i don't want them walking around up here in the hallway outside of this room poking their paws and like boo does not need more stress than he already has so that's my plan i want to keep the other three cats confined downstairs i want to get myself situated so i have what i need in here and then i am going to hang out with Boo. I might even go grab a cable box. There is a small TV in here. There's no cable box, so I might go grab a cable box that way I can watch some TV. So Stella, Simba, and Splash are all downstairs right now. I just uh, brought Stella down her favorite toy, and uh, Splash is under the ottoman. So they have everything that they need down here. There's food, there's water, um, obviously litter boxes. They have all their toys. And on TV, I am putting the easy listening music station. 
um, just because I feel like that'll keep everything calm and maybe if Boom makes noise upstairs, maybe they're not going to hear it as much or they might think it's on the TV. Um, so that's what I'm going to do. I'm actually going to put a little bit of dry food out for them um, and then I'm going to grab some food for Boo, bring that upstairs and then I think we're set for a while. Right now it is 7.50 p.m. and um, I think I have everything set up uh, okay right now. So I do have a TV on in this room. Uh, there is no cable connection in this room though. So I do have um, like Amazon, um, their box. It's kind of like a Roku. I do have a Roku, but I can't find the remote for it. Um, so I have this Amazon, I think it's like a fire box or something. I don't know, I've used it like once or twice. Um, so I have that on and I have my laptop and my external hard drive and my camera. So hopefully I could do some work while I'm in here. Um, I put some food out for Boo and I'm just about to open this carrier and I don't know what's going to happen. I have no idea what this cat is going to do. I don't know if he's going to freak out. I don't know if he's going to be calm. I have no idea. And um, the battery indicator on this camera is flashing now that the battery is going to go dead. So now I have to leave the room again and try to get a new battery. Okay guys, so just about ready to um, let Boo out. Let's see what happens. Ready Boo? They said he's probably gonna hide. Oh, oh, oh. It's okay. It's okay. It's okay. It's okay. It's okay, boo. It's okay. You're not going outside. It's okay. You're okay. You're okay, boo. You're okay. You're okay, okay? You're okay. You're fine, boo. Just hang out. You're fine. You're okay, boo. You're okay. You're okay, boo. This is very similar to what Splash did. See, this is why I closed the window. Because I, I knew he was going to try to get out a window. And what I should do is I should shut the blinds. You're okay, boo. You're okay. You want to eat some food? Want some food? Okay, I'll be perfectly happy if he just kind of lays up there. He's looking out the window because obviously he wants to go out, but that's not going to happen. I can't believe how much fur they shaved off of him. And there's no way he could go out there because he's on these meds. And they say that, you know, if he went out there on these meds, he's not going to stand a chance against any of the other cats. So, um, he just needs to calm down. I'm very happy with how calm he is now. I'm just going to sit here and be quiet and just hang out with him. I mean, he did knock the towels down, but I'm not even going to um, like move anything around. I just want him to be quiet and relax. And I do want to uh, block his view of those windows. But I don't know, maybe it's better to keep the view of the windows because the cats do like looking out of it. So I think it's just he needs to get used to it. I just hope he doesn't howl all night. Um, that would be horrible if we did that. So, let's see what happens. It is 8.20 p.m. and, um, I have this brush. It's a brand new brush. I had, like, an extra. And this was inside, so I just, uh, uh opened it up. And I've been brushing Boo with this, and he's been letting me, so that's good. And right now, he's just hanging out by the window. That's where he's been hanging out, and that's where I've been brushing him. Um, I was able to put the towel back up there that he originally knocked down and I put that little bed up there also in case he wants to lay in it. But he's just been happy um, hanging out by the window. That's where the other cats hang out. I think it's just a favorite cat hangout place. I really just want him to make himself comfortable and, you know, take a nap and go to sleep for a while. And that's what he looks like. You know, he's still on meds and they definitely shaved off quite a lot of his fur. I'm surprised that they shaved off so much um, of his fur on the outside of the leg. I thought I saw swelling on the inside of the leg um, on a joint on the inside, but 
Um, we'll see. They said to watch it and see what happens. So let's hope he just gets comfortable and goes to sleep. Right now he's on good behavior. Aside from that like little initial freak out, he's been very calm and he's been on good behavior. And let's hope he just feels safe and sleeps like the other cats did when they first came inside. So he still enjoys being brushed. I just want to move slow around him, stay calm. And hope he takes a nap. He's had a very long and rough day, right, Pooh? I mean, basically from the moment I went outside and said hello to him, he's been in the carrier and at the vet all day. And that's what I want. I want him to just rest here and sleep here. And that's like how Simba sleeps. Simba sleeps with his head on the uh, on that windowsill. He has more room in the towel if he wants to make himself comfortable. So, I'm hoping he falls asleep, then I could leave the room for a while and get some other stuff done. Okay, boo? 8.30 p.m. I gave him some plain water and he wouldn't drink it. So then I gave him his food that had water in it and he's drinking all of that water. I just hope if he needs to pee or poop that he uses the litter box. He pooped in his carrier before on the way to the vet. Like maybe five minutes before I got there. And um, with the towel over it you really couldn't smell it too bad. I mean I smelt it in the car a little bit but I rolled the windows down. And there's really nothing I could do at that point, so I just brought him into the vet and I put the carrier on the bench there and um, I didn't even say anything. And uh, they did not say anything to me either when I picked him up, so I guess they assumed, I would think that they assumed that he did it while he was waiting there. Obviously out of nerves, and I'm sure a lot of cats do that, so. But he's definitely hungry and thirsty. It is 9 p.m. and Boo's hanging out here looking at all of his food. So that was half of a can of Sheba and uh, he drank all the liquid that was in it and then I put more liquid in it because I just wanted him to get more liquid and he had that too. I'm not going to give him any more food right now just because he's still on the meds and I don't want him to have an upset stomach. Sometimes they say just give him like half of his normal food amount. There is some dry food on uh, the tray for him if he wants it. I'm just going to move his bowl over so he could just lay down here. Okay. I'll put that away, Boo. Oh, he's rubbing up against it. Did you want more? I'm not giving you any more. So right now that is his tray of food and water. I moved it over. It was in a corner before. I just moved it here more near the carrier just so um so he knows where it is it is 9 51 p.m boo is still hanging out near the window i'm hoping he stays there i've petted him i've brushed him he's been purring and uh, he's been watching some critters walk around the patio we saw a possum and um right now i am uh watching some shows on Amazon. I guess it's Amazon Prime Video. And I'm just gonna lay down and hopefully take a, a little nap. And hopefully Boo will do the same. It's 10.30 p.m. I was just brushing Boo and Hydrox walked across the patio. It looked like he was walking over to the water bowl. I think Boo saw him too. 
Boo Boo is enjoying being brushed too much. Right now I'm petting him. Right, Boo? See, he just wants to be brushed. There goes Hydrox. Do you see him? Boo's been kind of rubbing up against the windows and the curtains. Yeah, he's like putting his scent on things. Okay, Boo, I want him to like relax and lay down. Relax and lay down, Boo. Come on. kind of windy out so he sees a lot of stuff like blowing around and swaying in the breeze. Okay boo. Come on boo. Okay that's enough for now. It is now midnight and I'm going to go uh, lay down on my own bed. I've been kind of napping in this room, but I can't get comfortable. There's only like a little love seat here and it's not comfortable at all. Boo has been just here by the window, hanging out. So I'm going to go and hopefully he'll just continue to just relax. I'm going to feed the cats. It's like almost eight o'clock and Stella is just dying to go upstairs right now. I really had to, I had to use a magazine to kind of push her down here because um, she was ready to jump upstairs and um, yeah, they're all going crazy. Now what everyone needs to do right now, all these cats is stay calm, okay Stella? The goal for today is for everyone to stay as calm as possible. Right, Stella? Come on. So first I need to sit here and just spend some time with them. Because normally in the morning they would like jump up my bed and stuff and be upstairs. Let's see Stella. She's like so happy to be petted right now. Right, Stella? Okay. Today they're getting uh, Trader Joe's tuna for cats. I haven't given them fishy food in about two weeks. Stella is really enjoying it and the other two are like, what did you just feed me? But they'll go back and eat it. I just scooped out the litter boxes and now Simba is eating the tuna. Yay. It is 8.11 a.m. Boo was such a good boy all night. So I went to bed around midnight and he was up by the windows and then I got up at like 6 a.m. to check on him and he was just uh, laying here under this little love seat thing um, that's in this room and um, he kind of sat up when I came in the room. Now I just gave him some breakfast so he just came out to say hello to me. Hello boo. And uh, hopefully He'll eat some breakfast and hopefully he'll use the litter box. I don't know if he's already used it or not. There is some litter kicked out of it, but I don't know if that was there and I just didn't notice it. Um, and there you could see his shaved leg. I want to take a better look at it, but like right there you could see like a puncture wound. They said he had a puncture wound. So they also said he had quite a few other scars. Okay, boo. Come on. Eat your food, boo. Come on. Now to me, this is the area that looks swollen on his leg uh, the other day. Um, it looked like this was where maybe a pus filled pocket was, but I don't know, maybe that's just how his bone is over there. I'm sure that the vet gave him a good exam before they decided where uh, an injury might be, before they decided where they would shave him. Um, but he did say, you know, I could bring him in for a follow up if 
things look like they're not improving the way that they should be improving. So here's where they shaved him. And I think you guys could see the puncture wound that they found. Again, they did not find any pus in it or around it, um, but they did clean it out. And um, you could see all the other scars on his leg. I don't know um, if those wounds were deep or uh, shallower or what, but he has been in quite a few scrapes. So we need to remember that he is still on painkillers, so he might not be limping like he normally would if he was off the painkillers, because obviously painkillers kill pain. So he could still have um, the same issue that was causing the limp. He just won't be feeling it. So I really have to wait three days and see um, after the painkillers wear off um, whether he's limping again or not. Okay, so I just put um, Paul Dinning's channel on. That's the one that the upstairs cats love watching. He has videos of like birds and squirrels and this one is mice. And Boo is captivated. Absolutely captivated. I don't know if I... Part of me thinks maybe I should put the TV on the floor. I just don't want to scare him because that'll move a bunch of stuff around. I just put the TV down at his level. He's looking like, where are they coming from? He's watching them. Oh, he's making like a little hunting chattering noise. He's looking behind the screen to see where they come from. Oh, boo, who's that? Do you see that? Maybe that'll keep him distracted for a while, which would be a good thing. Other good news, guys. Look, it looks like he used the litter box. Looks like he peed in there. He didn't cover it up, but it looks like he used it. So far, Pooh is very happy in this room. I don't want to jinx anything by saying that, but it's really like a little hotel room for him. He has like his food area here. He has his birds and mice on TV over here. He has his play mat here. He has his litter box there. He has the windows there to look out of. And then he has the area under the love seat here um, where he could just chill, hang out, and relax. He should be fine until he discovers the door. Okay, I just took the bird and mice videos off the TV because I felt like they were agitating Boo too much and he was really wanting to like hunt them and look around the room for where he's hunting them and I was afraid he was going to want to bust out of the room. So I put something else on. Okay, so I put some relaxing harp music on because I heard that for some reason harp music is really relaxing the cats. And Boo has decided to climb up here and sit next to me. And now maybe he's just going to climb down and eat some food. I don't know what he's doing. Nope, he's climbing back up. <laughs> hey, Boo. He wants me to pet him. Hey, Boo. Okay, he's jumping into my lap. Sorry if it's out of focus, but he's really super close to the camera. Okay, so Boo ate all of his wet food. He ate a few bits of his dry food and he drank some water. And he's been sitting here grooming himself and uh, rubbing all up and down against my feet. And, um, let's see, um, he's really soft right now. Okay, so, um, I scruff carried Boo to put him on the window because it looked like he wanted to go up there and I want to leave the room. And then he jumped down and I was like, come on Boo, just stay up there. And he doesn't have the strength in his legs to jump up there normally because he only makes it halfway and then he comes crashing down. So then I just picked him up like a normal cat. I didn't even have to do a scruff carry, just like a normal carry. And um, put him back up there and then he jumped back down. I'm like, come on, Boo, just stay up there. It is 10 a.m. I just came in to see Boo and he's just hanging out up here by the windows. That's exactly what I want him to do. I want him to just sit up here and relax. Right, Boo? Good boy. I don't want him jumping up around. I mean, I put him up here. I don't want him jumping off. If he jumps off and um, 
he's gonna have a hard time getting back up. So Boo, just hang out here. He doesn't have a hard time getting down. That seems to be easy for him, but I guess his back leg is still weak. So he has a hard time getting up here. Boo, you hang out up here, okay? You just hang out up here. He basically just wants me to sit here and pet him all day. But um, I need to run a few errands this morning. Today I'm working from home, which is a good thing. I told them yesterday that I'm just going to take my computer home and everything that I need, and today I'm going to work from home. So I want to um, run these errands, be back by 11, and then just sit down and focus all day and just knock a lot of stuff out that I need to knock out. Boo! Scratch on this. He's been scratching the rug, so I wanted to give him this cardboard scratcher. This is one of those Trader Joe's scratchers um, that I bought a while ago. I had an extra, and I opened it up today. I just sprinkled a little bit of catnip on it, and I'm hoping that he uses it. It might take him a while to get used to it. Maybe not. There. He smells the catnip. I'll be happy if he just lays there. I'll be happy if he lays on this. Maybe he'll scratch it. Right now it's on the toy. So Boo has just jumped up here by himself twice now. I guess it just took him some getting used to how to do it. And um, now he's fine with it. And... Um, since he doesn't have a sprain or a break or a fracture, at least not that they could tell, but they didn't really um, x-ray it or anything, um, he seems okay. I don't want him jumping, but what are you going to do? He's a cat. All right, boo, you hang out here. Hang out here, and I'm coming back right back, okay? It's 12.30 p.m. It took me a little longer to run those errands than I wanted to. I just got back, and Boo's been sleeping under this love seat. He ate all of his food. It is about 1.30 and I'm downstairs with the cats. I'm actually doing some work in the computer while I'm down here. And there goes Simba. I opened the window for them. So that's actually a window you can open. It slides open. And there's a screen. So it's not like they're going to get out. And uh, they've been enjoying some fresh air. Splash and Simba were just kind of running around and wrestling with each other. I figure maybe if I can keep them awake now during the day and let Boo sleep upstairs, because when I'm not in the room, Boo's sleeping usually. Um, or resting, then uh, maybe at night they'll sleep better because usually they're up all night. Two thirty-five p.m. They're having fights on the cat tree. Well, I guess not really fights, but they're kind of like wrestling each other, kind of playing king of the mountain. Splash has decided to check out what I'm doing. I moved the ottoman over closer to me because Stella was laying on it and then she jumped off. But I look at this, Splash is like laying right near me right now. This is really like a first for him. Totally. I mean, here's Splash, right? And here I am. Here's me. Here's Splash. Hey, Splash!
2.51 p.m. I'm checking on Boo. He's been laying under here. Good boy, Boo. Good boy. Good boy. You lay down, okay? You sleep, okay? You sleep in here, okay? Okay, he figured out how to use a scratching pad. Yay. So, Boo just wants me to pet him. And brush him. And, um... The harp music is definitely calming for cats. I just turned it off um, when I turned the camera on. I like to turn off external music when I turn the camera on because you can get copyright strikes on YouTube. But um, yeah, so I just turned it off and now he's not as relaxed as he was when it was on. So someone told me that for some reason harp music really relaxes cats and it calms them down. And I would have to agree based on what I've seen with Boo. Right, Boo? Okay, so I basically just came in here to check on him, and I want to go back out, but he's not letting me. Like, I need for him to be distracted for a minute, otherwise he'll follow me out. But this is his new thing. See, he's standing on top of me right now. He likes to crawl all over me.
I can't keep from laughing every time they make that weird growling noise. <laughs> it's the funniest thing. <laughs> what are you guys doing up there? It is 4 p.m. I'm upstairs in the kitchen. I just put a spaghetti squash in the oven and I heard the outside feeder go off and I looked out the window and there's Hijox. I mean, he's wasting no time in claiming the patio now that Boo is spending time inside. So I think it's around 4.30 p.m. right now. It might be around 4.45. I don't know for sure, but I just Gave Hydrox some wet food out here in the patio. This is the rest of the tuna. Look who's watching me. Look who's watching me from the window. It's Boo. Hey, Boo. How weird is this? How weird is this to see Boo inside the window, right, Boo? These are the anti inflammatory tablets I have to give to Boo. I have to give him one today with his dinner and one tomorrow with his dinner. It is Onsior Robina Coxib. I don't know how to pronounce that. Six milligram tablets for cats. Here's what the tablets look like. They are small. She said to mix it up with some food. Make sure he eats the entire thing. They are chewable. And I am not a fan of medication. Um, I'm not a fan of antibiotics. I'm not a fan of anti-inflammatories. I'm not a fan of painkillers. Um, I would rather... Uh, the human body or the cat's body um, handle things. But since Boo went to the vet and they had already administered um, a few medications to him, there was really nothing I could do at that point. Like, I'm not going to tell them to not give the medications, but in my mind, medications are always like a last resort. So hopefully um, he won't ever need medications again other than maybe like when he gets fixed and they give him a painkiller then. I just put a little bit of Boo's favorite food, this is the Sheba turkey pate, in this bowl. I'm going to give this to him, and then after he eats this, then I'll give him his dinner. Boo's very hungry because he finished all of his breakfast, and he hasn't had anything since then. I just wanted him to relax today. And if I see that he cleans the bowl, then I'll give him more food. He ate his pill. Yay. Okay, boo. Okay, boo. I have more for you. I have more. There's more. I just gave him more food. I gave him half of the can and I also poured some water in it. And hopefully he'll finish this. And then if he does, maybe I'll give him some more. I don't want to give him too much. Okay, boo ate all of his food and he's still looking for more. He ate a whole can. So I'm going to go grab him maybe some dry food. So Stella, Splash, and Simba ate all of their tuna. I mean, this is pretty much an empty platter. Happy fall. Aren't these cute platters? Just finished the uh, last design and now this is the new design. Happy fall. Okay, so I'm sitting here in Boo's room on this like little love seat. I'm sitting here trying to edit today's video. And Boo keeps jumping up like this. Can you see him? It's dark and I can't see him. And then he walks on my laptop. Right now he's walking like he's rubbing against me. <laughs> okay. Now he's sitting on the laptop. Boo. If, if, if anyone ruins today's video, it's Boo. He's sitting on the laptop, guys. You probably can't see because it's dark in here. It's very dim lighting just to keep him calm. And yeah, so Boo is sitting on the laptop right now. Hey, Boo.
Okay, boo, you relax. You rest, okay? You rest, okay? He has just eaten two cans of Sheba. Like, two three-ounce cans of Sheba. The first can was turkey. The second can was chicken. Both were pate. He also had, I don't know, let's say like a, maybe a quarter cup of dry food, a third cup. He ate a lot of food. I don't want to give him too much food because I'm not 100% sure he's using the litter box. All right? Okay, now he's kneading my leg, but he seriously needs to have his nails clipped. Do you remember how big his nails were? Yeah. Okay. Sorry, guys. I know this camera's not really good in low-light situations. Okay, Boo. Okay. So Boo has now been inside for more than 24 hours. And he's been a very, very good boy. He's been the best patient out of all four of the cats. He's been the best one. Yeah, he's been the most well-behaved. Yeah. Good boy, Boo. Okay? Yeah. Okay. It is 9 p.m. and I'm trying to edit this video. And Boo's laying on my wrist. He's saying, don't edit this video. Look. Look. He's laying on my wrist. He's saying, don't edit the video. Pet me instead. How am I going to get anything done? Okay, I'm trying to edit this video. And Boo has decided that he would rather use the laptop than me. Come on, Boo. <laughs> I hope he doesn't, like, delete stuff. Okay, Boo, come on. Come on, Boo. It's about 9 a.m. right now, and the downstairs cats are uh, just about ready to eat. I'm just about ready to give them food, and I just wanted to show you guys Splashy if I could. Because Splashy has been coming out of his shell about. And, I mean, I pet Stella, and I pet Simba, and uh, Splash has been letting me pet him before he eats, but not just like one or two little pets. You know, he likes it back here. I'm gonna give him a little rub back here. But, like, he'll walk away, but then, see, he'll turn around and come back. So he's, like, figuring out that he likes being petted. Now, he let me pet him a lot more than that just just a minute ago, but I guess he's had too much for one day already. All right, Demba? Stella, you ready to eat? Good morning, boo. It's about 9.05 a.m. And I visited Boo at 4 a.m. just to check up on him. And he was, he was sleeping right here where I left him. And then around 5 a.m. I heard him digging around in the litter box. And this is what the litter box looks like today. So it appears that, yes, he has used the litter box. I don't smell cat poop in this room um, or cat pee. So it doesn't smell like he did anything an area other than the litter box and since there are litter remnants up here on this blanket um, that's more evidence that he actually did use the litter box so good boy boo good boy so basically that means um, feral cats really don't need any training to use a litter box I did not have to train any of the uh, downstairs cats I did not have to train boo he just knew how to use it instinctually so I'm taking the blanket Boo slept on and the towel that was by the window um, and I'm bringing those downstairs and going to wash them and right now I'm just letting the other cats smell them so they kind of get a better understanding of what's going on. I'm also going to wash that bowl out. Okay.
Okay, I'm gonna take these. I don't want, I don't want uh, Simba laying on them or rubbing up too much on them, just in case any fleas jumped off onto them. It's about 11 a.m. and I just scooped out Boo's litter box. It was not a pleasant experience at all. I mean, it's never a pleasant experience scooping a litter box, but this was like 10 times worse than the downstairs cats. I mean, I don't know if a raw food diet, you know, they say that when someone eats mostly raw, it changes um, their poop and their pee so it doesn't smell as bad. And I would believe it. I would totally believe it because the downstairs cats um, have, it's like, it's bearable for me to scoop those litter boxes, but this one, it was just so bad. I mean, the pungency level was like through the roof. I had to like kind of gasp for air a few times. It was bad. I don't know if it's the medication he's on or I don't know if it's just the food he's eating, the, um, you know, all the cooked food. So I defrosted some extra raw food for him. So I'm going to give him some for dinner and see how he likes it. He's not going to be on a 100% raw food diet. The downstairs cats are not on 100% raw either. All their wet food is raw, um, but Boo has been eating mostly canned wet food. So um, I think maybe I'll try to start transitioning more of that over to raw food. Um, I don't know. Again, I just take it um, one day at a time and one meal at a time and see how it goes. Maybe he won't even like eating it at all. But, I mean, it was nasty. So here's Boo. He was hiding under the love seat, and uh, I just peeked under there to make sure it was okay, and he came out. He comes out when he sees me, and uh, he likes to walk around and get petted and get brushed. He seems okay, but we have to remember that he is on painkillers, and he's on painkillers um, until tomorrow night. It will be three days. So yesterday was 24 hours, today will be 48 hours, then tomorrow night um, will be 72 hours and that will be when they wear off or when they're supposed to wear off. So with painkillers you have to remember that they only suppress symptoms. Pain is a symptom. When you take a painkiller all it does is suppress the symptom of pain. It does not stop what's causing the pain to begin with. So uh, the pain can come back right away um, if the cause of the pain has not been dealt with or the pain can come back um, in the near future or in the distant future. I mean, it always just depends on whether the cause of the pain gets fixed or, or not. And if the cause of the pain does not get fixed, chances are the pain can come back even stronger. So right now he's still on watch. And I did notice that after I gave him the anti inflammatory last night he did have a little bit more energy so potentially he could still have a fever that's what the anti-inflammatory is for to kind of bring down fever symptoms also right now I want to go out and I want to run some errands before the traffic gets crazy and um, I'm going to try to do that as fast as I can hopefully I'll only be gone like an hour or two okay so I just came outside and Hydrox was hanging out in the bushes near the house and uh, I gave him half a can of the Iams wet cat food. It looks like he's eaten some of the dry food out of the feeder. And he's wasting no time in taking over this patio right now. It is 3.45 p.m. Traffic was horrendous. Parking was horrendous. So it looks like he was just sleeping under the love seat. Uh, before I left, I peeked in the window. And I didn't see him anywhere, so I assume that's where he was. And when I just walked in, that's where he was, so. I just want him to get rest. There is the wound on his leg. The wound on his leg looks like it's healing. But again, I mean, we'll know better when the painkillers wear off um, as far as like how he's acting. If he goes back to moving in slow motion and, and stuff like that. Boo, you're covered in cardboard. You're covered in cardboard, boo. I've had relaxing music on for him. Playing YouTube videos with like harps and flutes and relaxing music. They say that's good for cats. Cats like that. Right, boo? Boo's very happy. What's really surprising me the most is that so far he hasn't really even tried to get out of this room. And all the other cats 
tried to get out of this room like, you know, within 12 to 24 hours. So it could be that Boo has never been in any other parts of the house, so he's just really happy here. He's really happy just being anywhere inside. So uh, we'll see what happens. I got a bunch of gates today. Um, actually, I bought one of the gates yesterday. You know, like the baby gates or the pet gates um, that you use um, to uh, wall off doors. I had to put a gate um, near the door to downstairs because every time I opened the door, Stella would come running upstairs and uh, she made a beeline for this room because she's really, really nosy. And um, I didn't want her disturbing Boo, so I put a gate on that door and so far it's been working. I can see in her eyes that she wants to jump the gate, but uh, I haven't been letting her do that. It looks like Boo used the litter box again while I was out, which is good. Yeah, so I bought um, a total of three gates. They had a freestanding gate um, that was a really good deal at the Christmas tree shop. It was like $19.99. And then I went to PetSmart and then they had like a taller uh, pet gate. Um, I think that was like $40. I'm not sure which ones I'm going to keep, and I'm not sure which ones I'm going to use, but I have options to figure out. Okay, Boo likes, Boo likes to climb in my lap. Lay down, Boo. Okay, Boo likes to lay down. This is Boo sitting in my lap, and he's needing me, but... He really needs to have his nails cut. They wouldn't clip his nails. I asked them to do that at the vet. But they said they don't do that for outside cats. Because um, it's not good to cut the nails of outside cats. Now, if Boo stays inside, wow, he's going to have to have his nails clipped. Because they're hurting. They hurt me. Right, Boo? Good boy, Boo. Yeah, you're a good boy, Boo. You're a nice boy, Boo. He's been on his best behavior. Mm -hmm. You know, it's really, really funny how all four of these cats, Stella, Splash, Simba, and Boo, have completely different personalities. Like, completely different. Like, none of the other cats would do that. Stella would not even do that. What Boo just did, like, climb in my lap and sit there. They would not do that. Simba wouldn't even do that. So, uh, Boo would do that. And, um, yeah, they're all just so ridiculously different. And Boo's different than the other three. I mean, it's amazing how cats can have such different personalities. Right, Boo? Do you guys like this emoji pillow? I got that at VidCon a few years ago. VidCon's like a big YouTube conference that they have in Anaheim, California, once a year. And they were selling these pillows, except I didn't have to buy it. Someone gave it to me. It was cute. It looks cute with this pillow, right? Every now and then he decides he needs to uh, groom where he was uh, shaved. He's really not happy about being shaved. You know how vain Boo is about his fur. I know, Boo. What's the matter? So do you see here on his lower leg how um, 
it's shaved here on the bottom and on the sides. It's shaved on the inside too. So to me, it looks like they started examining him, like down here. They started shaving him down here to see like, well, what's going on down here? And they couldn't find anything. So they just started um, shaving higher and higher and higher until they finally found something. Um, so that's what looks like uh, happened at the vet because they were pretty sure that it was um, like a wound and an abscess but you know time will tell uh, whether that's the case or whether there's actually like a fracture or something but there doesn't appear to be because he is moving on it fairly well and it doesn't look like anything's broken like nothing is really um out of alignment or anything although you know with a fracture you really can't tell Okay, so while he's grooming himself, I am going to put his calming music back on and then I'm going to go and visit the other cats. So right now on the outside of this room, I have one of those draft dodger things. Um, just in case one of the cats come up here and start sticking their paws under there, at least it'll, um, you know, keep them from doing that to most of this door area. So this is the gate that I got at Home Depot. It was like $15. Um, it's like a child gate or a pet gate and um, I put this here just because I don't want the cats running upstairs every time I open the door and that's what they've been doing I mean Stella especially look at this it's Hydrox I gave him food before I gave him wet food before and uh, the feeder dispenses dry food in the morning not twice a day anymore. I mean, what it dispenses in the morning is more than enough for a hydrox. Even if I didn't give him any wet food, it's still enough. So, hydrox wasted no time in reclaiming this patio area for himself. And that's exactly what he did last year when Stella and the kittens came inside. He right away moved into uh, the wooden cat house. And I don't know where Boo was at that time. He didn't come around uh, often at all. I think all winter, I might have seen him maybe only two or three times. One time was uh, in the snow when he came to eat out of the automatic feeder. I mean, it could be that he was eating out of the automatic feeder most of the time. I just didn't see him uh, just because it goes off in the morning. But... Um, I don't know. Anyway, there's Hydrox. And this is the gate, and so far it's working well. Um, every time I open the door, I have to uh, hop over this gate. I have to maneuver myself over this gate. So um, that's been good. You know, it's been keeping me flexible. And uh, I've been getting a little extra exercise with that. But, um, yeah, I'm going to figure out um, what I'm going to do with these other gates and how I'm going to let the other cats upstairs, whether I... I do it one cat at a time, or, um, yeah, I don't know. Uh, I'm just going to take it one day at a time. I don't want to do any of that until Boo comes off the painkillers, which is tomorrow evening. The downstairs cats have been really good, so I'm giving them each a meaty stick. These are chicken meaty sticks. Slow down, Stella. Slow. 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 Okay. You want one, Simba? Okay, Stella. You're only allowed to have one. One per person. Come on. There you go, Simba. He should eat this one because he likes chicken. He wants to take it out of my hand because he wants to eat it too fast. Slow down, Simba. Eat it slow. Good boy. No! Simba, you had yours. Simba, you had yours. Splash! Give me a splash. Go. It's a meaty stick. 
Eat it. Eat your meat stick. Oh my God, look at this. Look at Hydrox. He's hanging out near the back door. This is crazy. He's never done this before. Oh my God. Look, I'm standing right here near the door and he's still sitting there. Simba came up the stairs, he was like all upset. I've never seen Hydrox interact with the kittens or Stella in a positive way. I've seen Hydrox get in fights with Stella when Stella was outside, but I never saw them get along. What do you guys think will happen if I go outside with this meaty stick that Splash doesn't want to eat? You think Hydrox would eat it? Hydrox, you want a meaty stick? Hydrox, you want a meaty stick? He doesn't even know what a meaty stick is. I'm gonna go outside and see if Hydrox will eat a meaty stick, alright Simba? You stay here. Hydrox! Hydrox! You want a meaty stick? Here! 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 You want a meaty stick? Here! I know, here! Would you like a meaty stick? You want a meaty stick? What's the matter? Here, meaty stick. Let's see if he eats it. Is he gonna eat it? No, he's gonna run. So that's his food from before he ate it, or it's eaten. I'm assuming he ate it. What do you want, Hydrox? This is a meaty stick, you could eat this. Here. Eat it. He's afraid of it. Eat the meaty stick. Go eat it. It is about 54 degrees out right now. And today is the first day that is really starting to feel like fall. And uh, I think it's good that Boot came inside when he came inside because, you know, I'm sure at night it's going to get a bit colder and, um, you know, cats don't like being out in the cold. So I'm sure he appreciates being inside a warm house. I just took the gate away from the door to the upstairs and I moved the gate um, to block off the rest of the house. And the three of them were just like staring at me like, what are you talking about? So there's the gate in there, Simba. Now, but they can potentially jump over that gate, but um, I'm just going to see what he's going to do. Right away he's looking to jump. Don't! Okay, so this is an Animal Planet freestanding pet gate, and this is going right back to where I bought it, which was Christmas Tree Shop. At least I think I'm going to return it, because this is all it does. It only does this, like, Z shape. Like, if I want to straighten it out, okay, yeah, it'll do like this, but, like, if I want to, you know, put one part like that and then if I want to put one part like this and then that part like that and then another part like this it doesn't do it. Okay so this is Boo's food. I'm giving him a very little bit of food with that one tablet that he needs to take today, the anti-inflammatory tablet. And um, again I'm just giving it to him with a little bit of food just to make sure he eats it. I'm not really happy um, with this drug that he's taking. I was just reading the paperwork that comes with it. And, um, yeah, I hate pharmaceutical drugs of any kind for any reason. Um, so I'll be happy that this is the last day that he's taking it. So Boo is eating his food with medicine in it, and I didn't have the camera on, but he's back to meowing at me. Like, when I walked in the door, he meowed at me several times, like, I'm hungry, where's my food I want to eat? Um, so it looks like he ate the pill. And... I have some more food for him right here. I actually have some of the raw food on top. So I'm going to give him the raw food. And I'm going to give him some of this turkey Sheba just because that's his favorite. And uh, we'll see. Okay, boo. More food. Okay, so it looks like it looks like he's eating both the raw and the canned. And I was reading the, um, the side effects from this drug. 
And the side effects are actually the opposite. The side effects are like anorexia or loss of appetite. And uh, if anything, Boo seems to be getting his appetite back. And now that he's had that final pill, um, I could give him some treats during the day. I haven't been giving him a whole lot of food during the day. Like, he's only been eating his breakfast. That's it. And then I've been giving him nothing until he gets that pill because I just want to make sure he was eating it. So I want to give Boo a toy to play with. That's the one thing he doesn't have in that room. Um, he has some toys on a stick, but he doesn't have just, like, a toy to play with. So I have this Our Pets. It says it's a zoo crew plush animal. Uh, it encourages physical and mental activity, enticing texture, and catnip scent. I don't want to give him something with, like, a whole lot of catnip. Um, this just says it has a catnip scent, so I don't think it's loaded up with catnip. This is something that I got on sale for, like, a dollar uh, at PetSmart quite a while ago. And it makes that little mousy sound, so I think he's going to like it. It says, to activate sound, remove toy from card. Pull clear plastic tab from toy. Encourage your cat's inner hunter. Indoor cats have no natural prey and they can become bored as a result. Our pets play and squeak toys feature an electronic sound module that when batted makes a realistic squeaking mouse sound, providing safe indoor prey and fueling your cat's desire to stalk and chase. Play and squeak toys encourage play and exercise, keeping cats agile, alert, and healthy. They keep your cats busy and positively engaged with you and the world around them while exercising their unique instinctual needs. Let your cat walk on the wild side with Zoo Crew. This assortment of fun, plush zoo animals will enthrall your cat with sight and sound they can't resist. It says it includes catnip, but I don't think there's too much in here. It doesn't smell like super catnipy or anything. So, um, all right, I'm going to cut this off the packaging and give it to Boone see if he likes it. I just give him the toy, he's really excited about it. Every time he uh, scratches on that scratcher, it means he's really excited about something. He seems to like the toy. I think he'll like the sound because he loved hunting mice outside. That's such a cute toy. I wish I brought more of them at the time. Okay, so while Boo is playing with his new toy, I brought in my laptop and external hard drive and I'm gonna work on editing a video and getting it posted. Right, Boo? Right, Boo? So I'm sitting here working on this video and it's kind of weird because like Boo's watching me edit a Boo video and uh, Boo has a middle name. It's Velvet. His name is Boo Velvet. How awesome is that? He told me that while he was sitting here. Right, Boo? Oh, see, he loves his name so much, he had to jump in my lap. Okay, Boo. Boo Velvet.
So right now what's going on is that Boo is playing with his new toy. At the same time, he's on this Trader Joe's cat scratcher. And at the same time, he's watching the Community Cats channel on YouTube. So he's seriously multitasking. So that squeaky toy perfectly matches his playmat. Like it's totally camouflage right now. It's in the middle of the playmat. You can barely see it. But he found it. It is 12.15 a.m. And Boo and I have been sitting here for quite a while. I just finished editing and posting a video and we've been watching a Community Cats channel marathon and Boo is just really enjoying his time inside. Do you see him pulling the air? See him like kneading the air? Good morning Boo! It is about 9.30 a.m. And I am going to give Boo some food. He's been saying hello to me. See, meowing. And uh, I'm gonna give him some food right now. I was downstairs with the other cats. They're already fed. He dove right in. Hey, Boo. Kind of living in How are you, Boo? He had all his wet food. He ate some of his dry food. I'm not giving him any more food right now. He had a lot of food. He had half of a can of the Sheba, and he also had a bunch of the Nature's Variety Instinct Raw Bites. I'm kind of thinking of transitioning him onto those. So, Boo has been perfectly happy to be inside. Today is the third day that he's inside and his pain medication um, will be wearing off this evening and today I need to give him the revolution um, for flea and tick uh, control if he doesn't go back outside then the revolution I give him today um, should get rid of like all the fleas, the eggs and the larva and um, will last 30 days and I don't think he would need another dose of it if he doesn't go out. Uh, maybe. Maybe one or two, but maybe not. So far he has had no desire to get out of this room. Um, the windows are there. He's not even looking out of the windows. Like He doesn't even want to go look out the windows. He's perfectly happy sitting on the love seat, uh, sitting underneath the love seat, uh, playing on the rug. See, here he goes. He likes to just sit here, or what he'll do is he'll like jump up on top of me. He's been perfectly happy doing this. He has not tried to get out the door. He has looked out the door a few times, but he's probably very wary of what's out there. Um, so I was thinking maybe either tonight or tomorrow to put a gate on this door, and then maybe see uh, see how it would be if like one of the other cats was on the other side of it, like I don't know, maybe Simba or something. Um, but we'll just we'll see what the day brings and how everything goes so right now I just came in here just to make sure he ate and to say hello and see how he's doing and then I'm gonna let him relax he needs to really continue to rest and if I'm in here he doesn't want to rest he wants to like walk around and get brushed and patted so this is what I want him to do I want him to just like lay here and that is what the wound looks like I mean it it definitely looks like it's been healing. There's like a little scab on it. Um, to me, it's kind of amazing that that little wound um, would cause that much pain or that much swelling or inflammation. So I don't know if there's something else going on. And again, we won't be able to know how it feels until the pain meds wear off. And that should be later today. All right, boo. Okay, boo. Okay.
He loved it. He's purring. And it looks like he has full mobility back on that leg. Hi, Bo. So this is what he does. He likes to jump in my lap and sometimes he'll sit down for a few minutes and then he'll walk away. All the downstairs cats are sleeping. We're relaxing. Stella's letting me pet her. She's turning into Simba. Look at that. The crazy positions. Stella's the kind of cat who, uh, you know, she's all nice being petted, and then it just changes. Like, all of a sudden, out of nowhere, she'll just be like, okay, enough, boom, smack you. She might smell boo on me. But I was just petting boo. So far she hasn't hissed. Hey Tyler! Someone's purring. I can't figure out if it's her or Simba. Stella, are you purring? Yeah. Stella's purring. Stella doesn't purr very often. Stella doesn't get to uh, lick my legs after I get out of the shower because she's been down here. I've been keeping the cats down here just because I don't want Boo to have additional stress upstairs. And they're happy down here. They have everything that they need. Uh, they've been running up and down their cat tree. And they've been running up and down the stairs. and They have places to explore and bugs to hunt and food to eat and water to drink and litter boxes and so many toys to play with. Trampolines to hide under. Hydrox is at the feeder. It looks like he ate some of the dry food before. He was just sitting in the bushes and I showed them there was more food there. I'd rather that he eats the dry food in the morning and then I give him like wet food later on in the day. I mean, there's a reason why that feeder dispenses food to feed the cats. So he should be happy. He has it all to himself right now. It is 2 p.m. and all of the cats are relaxing. Here's somebody's hanging out on the ottoman. And here's Stella. She was laying on the sofa, but she got up when I came downstairs. Hello, Stella. I'm pretty sure Splash is under this mini trampoline. Let's pick up the blanket and see if he hisses at us. Yeah, did you hear a miss? What are you doing, Splashy? No one's hurting you. <laughs> he does that all the time. Whenever he's like hiding under something and um, you know if you pick up a blanket or something that's covering it he'll hiss. It's like a it's like a reaction like an unconscious reaction. He doesn't even think about it. He just does it. And look at this. While I was showing you Splash these two came by. They're waiting for a T-R-E-A-T. What are you doing, Stella? See? Stretching in anticipation. They've been very good, considering that they've been just kind of confined to the downstairs area. You guys want a treat?
It is about 4 p.m. right now. I just gave Boo um, a dose of the Revolution for fleas. Um, I put it on the back of his neck and uh, he was fine with that. And I have both of these windows open right now. I mean, the screens are down, but the windows are open because he just used the litter box. Of course, I clean the litter box and then I come back in here to hang out and then he uses the litter box and he just took the biggest poop I've ever seen a cat take. So um, then I scoop that out, but man, it smells so bad. So I just open both of these windows and uh, he doesn't want to be in the room with the windows open. He's hiding underneath this love seat. So I find that very interesting. It's like the windows are open and he's now hiding because he doesn't want to be near an open window. But whenever I look for him under here, he does come out. Oh, look. There's like a whole bunch of torn up paper. I think that's from when Splash was under there. Splash likes to hang out under here also. Actually, most of the cats like to hang out under here. It's like a little cat cave. It is about 5.20 p.m. right now, and I just fed the inside cats. Just because it felt like it. I don't want to get some other stuff done. And, um... So Boo is getting half of the Nature's Variety Instinct Raw Bites, and then he's getting half of a can of the Turkey Sheba. He's also getting some of the dry Nature's Variety, uh, original dry, and a big thing of water. And uh, he's been resting and hiding under the love seat, and the painkiller should be wearing off right about now. So I don't know if he's been resting and hiding because the painkiller has worn off or because he's not happy that the windows are open. It could be either. It is 5.45 p.m. And I'm sitting here working on my computer and Boo's just been laying down here on the scratcher mat and uh, just hanging out. It is 6 p.m. And I'm sitting here working on my laptop. And Boo is sitting here on the love seat right next to me, taking a little nap. Sorry to wake you, Boo. I got this gate at Home Goods yesterday. It's like a freestanding gate. It says it's 60 inches by 36 inches. So it's three feet tall. What I liked about it is that all of these panels um, they can move this way. They could also move the other way. Um, the same thing with this. So right now, um, I have it uh, corralling this doorway. So I thought, let me open the door. Let me put this gate here. And let's give Boo a little look around what's outside of this room um, without giving him full access to the rest of the house yet. I want to wait until that revolution kicks in. They say uh, after 36 hours, that's when it has fully taken effect. So that would be um, not tomorrow night. That would be 24 hours. Tomorrow night would be 24 hours. And then the following morning would be 36. So potentially, um, maybe not tomorrow, but the next day, I'll let him wander around a little bit. Um, the other option is, actually, I don't think I want him to wander around because I don't want him to feel like he owns this place. Um, what I want to do is I want to start introducing the other cats um, through like a gate like this or something. So, so maybe if Simba was on the other side, they could smell each other. Again, it's small steps and it's just going to depend on what happens between the cats. Um, but right now, I just want to make sure Boo's feeling okay. He seems to be okay now that the painkillers have worn off. He doesn't seem to be as happy as when the painkillers were in effect, um, but he's been okay. And um, yeah, so right now I'm just testing this gate out. Um, it was $49.99, so I thought it was a fair price for this gate. It's really heavy and it's really sturdy. And again, it's really versatile in um, the way you can arrange it. So here's Boo. He's just kind of sitting here on the rug looking out the door. I just want him to feel a little bit more comfortable. It is 6.50 p.m. and I've been sitting here with Boo. He's been like laying on my leg 
And I just looked outside and there was Hydrax just laying on the step. And I wasn't 100% sure it was Hydrax because all I saw was a black cat from the back. So he said, Hydrax, and he looked right at me. This cat definitely knows his name. Hydrox, are you hungry? Would you like some food? Want some food? I picked up this stuffed rat from Ikea, I don't know, a couple months ago. It was in the kids section, it was only a couple dollars. And I thought the cats might like to play with it. And they've been good downstairs, so I'm gonna bring this downstairs and see if they wanna play with it. Let's see what they do with it. I might need to put it on a string. I think what I'm gonna do is see if I could, um, there's some thread here for like whiskers. I'm gonna see if I could put it on that fishing pole and what happens. That is all wrapped up in the, uh, This is what I want to be in front of it. They also had smaller mice, like this was a big rat. The smaller mice were, I don't know, like a dollar. I should go back and buy more if they have it. This is actually really creeping me out. When I lived in Manhattan, there were rats everywhere. Stella loves this thing. Notice how they go after the uh, the fishing wire. I'm just sitting on it. So he goes after the uh, the wire.
This is how the cats used to hunt when they were outside. Like whenever they had a bird or anything, it would always be like all of them pitching in together to get it. So let's chew in the wire. So he goes for the string. They're too smart, these cats. Flying rat. Good morning, Stella. It's eight thirty AM. I'm just about to head downstairs and feed the cats. I have this like baby gate up um, between the upstairs and the downstairs because the cats try to come upstairs. I don't want them. I don't want them trying to get into Boo's room right now because that's what they'll do. They put their paws under the door and start scratching. Hey, as it is right now, Stella's ready to jump the fence. So uh, I'm gonna go give them food. I have to. Uh, hurdle this gate every time I want to go between the upstairs and downstairs. How am I supposed to walk down the steps, guys? Let me walk. Hey, Splash. Look, 
The cats left me a dead bug. Wasn't that nice of them? Very splashy. They're all purring right now. Stella's purring. Simba's purring. I don't know if Splash is purring. Splashy, come on. See, I pet him, he walks away, but then he comes back. Unless we pet him more. See, he comes back. He likes to have his back scratched. Right, Splash, like your back scratched. Like that area right there. Let's see, then he walks away, then he comes back. Good morning, Boo. How are you? How you doing, Boo? Did you sleep okay? Did you sleep okay? Boo was another good boy last night, and um, I really did not hear a uh, noise coming out of this room. I mean, other than him using a litter box. And um, so today is the fourth day that he's in this room. He has spent three full days in this room, and um, he's going to spend another full day in the room today. And then tomorrow, um, I'm thinking about... Um, letting him smell another cat through a gate and see what happens with that. And um, again, just baby steps, taking it one day at a time. Right, Boo? Ready to eat? And uh, we'll see how it goes. Okay, I know you're hungry. Let's eat. Today, Boo is getting uh, the Nature's Variety Instinct Canned Food Chicken Pate. Um, he's also getting some of the raw chicken bites and this is the nature's variety dry food thank you to everyone who uh, has been sending food off of the Amazon wish list this entire meal um, was bought by people who watch the videos the dry food came off of the Amazon wish list the wet food came off of the Amazon wish list and even the raw food came off of the Amazon wish list. I bought that with a PetSmart gift card. Um, Amazon does not sell the raw food, uh, but they do sell gift cards to PetSmart and Petco, and that's where I can buy the raw food. So um, thank you to everyone who's been donating and contributing and buying off of the wish list. And thank you to everyone who contributed to Boo's vet bill. That was so awesome. It definitely takes a lot of stress off me uh, knowing that that's uh, easily paid for. And um, I definitely appreciate all of the support um, that you guys give to the cats and to the channel. And the cats definitely uh, appreciate it also. So I'm gonna let Boo eat and um, I'll be back here in a little bit. It is 9.47 a.m. And Boo is scratching at the door. This is the fourth day that he's been inside, so I'm surprised it's taken him this long. But this means problems will start. It's been nice and stress-free so far. Um, I'm going to go inside there and spend some time with him, and hopefully that'll just distract him from the door. Or maybe he just wants more food. Okay, now he has plenty of food. There's plenty of food there. He only ate the raw. Do you see what's happening now? He only ate the raw food. He doesn't want to eat the other food. Boo, are you becoming a food snob? It got cold last night, so I shut the windows. But what I do is I crack them open, like, I don't know, like an inch. Just so that there's air in here. Elbow. 
He's purring. Okay, Boo wants to be brushed. Hello, Boo. He wants to climb in my lap. Sorry, guys, it's hard to film this because he's like right up on me. Now he's gonna lay down and be brushed. And um, later today, um, or maybe tomorrow morning, I need to clean this room. I need to vacuum. And I need to throw like all the stuff in the washing machine. I don't want to disturb him too much. And I know if I bring a big vacuum out, he's going to freak. I have like a handheld little dust buster. I mean, he might freak with that also, but he's going to have to deal with it because I'm not putting him in another room. Okay, so I just uh, tapped up here with the brush to entice him to go up there. And he very easily jumped up there today, so it makes me think that his leg is healing. He seems to be more alert today, like things that are going on around him. I have the TV on right now. There was like a guy talking and he was like watching it, watching it, watching it. And uh, now he's actually interested in what's going on outside of the window. And he hasn't been interested in the windows at all since that first night he came in. And um, I'm not opening the windows. I don't trust him with the screens yet. And um, I think it's just good. It, it's good if he just sits by the windows today because that'll distract him from the door. And he could watch what's going on outside. And it's going to be very hard for him to get out these windows. There's no way he's going to open these windows. I mean, they're heavy. So um, I'll be happy if he just hangs out up there. I'm going to brush him a little bit while he's sitting up there. And hopefully he'll just stay there. So today Boo is looking around like he wants to start exploring this room. And it's been really nice that he has not been doing that. Just because there's stuff around that he like knock over and get into and strep so. Let's, let's all just hope he sits by the windows and stays out of trouble. Okay, I'm going to leave your brush there, Boo. Okay, you want it here? I'll leave your brush right there, Bob. It is 11.30 a.m. and there is Hydrox happily hanging out in the sun by the house. That has always been Hydrox's favorite spot. Like this whole area here where it gets sunny and warm. It is probably the warmest part of the patio. And that is where Hydrox has hung out for years. I mean, like the first year I moved into this house, Hydrox would come and hang out over there. And um, I'm sure Hydrox is very, very happy right now. So I just brought a plate of food outside for Hydrox. And I'm gonna give this to him. There's some dry food in the feeder. And I'm gonna have to watch the dry food in the feeder just to see um, if I need to lower the amount that's being dispensed. I don't want a whole bunch of food there at the end of the day and then I have like raccoons and animals come eat it. So I gotta keep an eye on that. So I gave Hydrox's food under the table. And these are the empty plates and it is so much easier just to take care of like one outside cat and not two warring outside cats. Look who got up to say hello, it's Boo. Yeah, I know you could probably hardly see him because the way that the uh, light is reflecting on the screen and everything. But Boo's up and he's looking out the window. I'd be happy if he just took a nap right here near the window in the sun. I think it could be good for him. So the other thing that I'm doing today is a whole bunch of laundry. I just did a whole bunch of towels. Now I'm doing this uh, like white blanket. This was a white blanket that I used to keep on part of my bed and that's where like Stella and Simon and all them used to lay on it. And while they're downstairs, it's really good time for me to kind of wash all the stuff. And um, you know, also I wanna wash everything now because if Boo's been carrying fleas for a few days, you have to be really careful. You know, the fleas could jump off of Boo onto my clothing or something after I pat him. I could be carrying them somewhere else. So. Yeah, I gotta be very conscious of all of that. It is 12.30 p.m. I was sitting in the other room um, working on my computer and I heard some noise in here, like Boo was 
banging on the door or something, but it didn't really sound like he was trying to get out. Then I just walked in, and uh, his little bed is, like, not where I left it, and his uh, feather toy on the wand is here, and then his other toy. So it looks like Boo's been playing with his toys, which means it looks like he might be feeling better. I definitely feel like he's more of himself today, obviously because the painkillers have worn off, and... Um, you know, it's been some time. Maybe he is starting to get back to normal. Boo's starting to get back to his old self. So he's having absolutely no problems itching himself with that leg now. It is 6.36 p.m. I'm just getting home. And Hydrox is talking to me. What do you want, Hydrox? What's the matter? I'm going to walk two steps. He's going to run away. I'm assuming he's hungry. He had all of the wet food. And there's no dry food in the feeder. Did he really eat all that food himself? I'm gonna have to move the camera that's pointed at Boo's apartment and point it at the feeder and see what's going on. And there's Boo. He's in the window. But it's really hard to see Boo in the window because he blends in with the background. He's looking at Hydrox right now. Hello, Hydrox. Are you hungry? You want to eat? Would you like some food? Tell me what you want. Are you hungry? You want dinner? You want some dinner? You want to eat food? What do you want, Hydrox? Okay, I'll get you some food, okay? Hello, Stella. Stella's been jumping up onto this gate. Let's see if she does it. Yep, see? What are you doing, Stella? Come on, I gotta get... Come on, I'm gonna give you food. Come on, I'm gonna give you food. Okay. Okay, I'm giving Hydrox some food. This is the Sheba turkey pate, half a can, I'm giving Boo the other half. I'm also giving him some dry food. Hydrox, you wanna eat? Right now the cats are all eating their food and Splash, he's really been letting me pet him a lot before they eat. Like I'm even shocked by how much he lets me pet him now. He really likes to have his back scratched, like the middle of his back. He really likes having that scratched and then like behind his shoulder blades and um, yeah, I feel like he's maybe starting to Loosen up and come around a little bit. Maybe get a little bit more confident. 
It is about 7 p.m. right now. And Boo is eating his dinner. So he's getting some of the Nature's Variety Instinct Raw Chicken Bites. He's getting a little bit of Turkey Sheba Pate. And he's getting a little bit of the Instinct Chicken Pouch. I think it's just cooked chicken in like a gravy. Uh, they say it's like a food supplement. It shouldn't be just their full diet. Um, but I gave some to the downstairs cats. I'm trying to give them like a little extra treat every day that they're kind of confined down there. They got meaty sticks a few days ago. Yesterday they got regular treats. Um, they got fish that one day. And um, today they got that extra chicken from the pouch. Who's very hungry? So that's a good sign. And I'm surprised it doesn't smell in here because I figured he would take a poop today. And um, either he hasn't or he has and um, that litter's doing a really good job with it. I'll scoop it out in a little bit later. He might take another poop after he eats. So Stella just somehow managed to jump the gate between the upstairs and downstairs. It is 7.17 p.m. I would like to make something for dinner. And Stella has decided that she can't stay downstairs another minute. I put this other gate here, uh, blocking off the kitchen from the hallway. Now this is a 36 inch gate, so it's a lot taller than the other gate. I would say it's at least a foot taller, if not more. She'll probably try to jump this also. Or maybe she'll be okay with just being up here in the kitchen. Hopefully she'll be okay. Now Boo has been confined to that room. He has not been let out in any other parts of the house. I was going to wait until tomorrow for the revolution to kick in, and then even then, I don't plan on letting him out of that room. If anything, I would just let him into the hallway a little bit um, in this gated area. Um, maybe let him smell some other cats through the gate and just see what happens. Now, Stella does like hanging out in the kitchen a lot of times. I don't know if she's going to try to jump this. I mean, this is a fairly high gate. She looks like she's going to try to jump it, though. Stella! trying to figure it out. Right now it is about 8.20 p.m. and I'm hanging out here with Boo. I just petted him for a little bit. I'll brush him for a little bit. And I'm just gonna sit here and uh, work on a video. Just spend some time with him because he's all alone here in this room. The other cats have each other. There's the three of them downstairs. I was just down there checking on them. And, you know, Boo doesn't like being all by himself. Boo's a social cat. So. So, I hang out here. Usually what happens is I, uh, once I get my computer and everything set up, he'll lay down next to me on this love seat. And then, last night, he slept with his head on my leg the whole time. Like he had his head on my thigh and uh, I was working on the computer and he was sleeping on me. So he likes to do that. Hello boop. Yep, there he goes. He's gonna jump on my lap. Sometimes he'll sit down, sometimes he'll just visit. Yep. Hello, boop. I have this um, like TV tray here, um, which I'm going to move in front of me so that I can put my computer on it and work on my computer. Mm. 
He's just like laying half on me, half on the computer. Then he makes himself comfortable. And he lays with this brush. Right, boo? You feeling better, boo? Are you feeling better, boo? Yeah, he's feeling better. But if I reach for that brush right now, he will try to scratch me. That's one thing he still does. He's very protective of things. Hey, boo! You're very protective of things. Who likes his things? He's purring. He's purring pretty. He's purring pretty loud. Who's a very happy cat inside? Right, Boo? I think he wants to be with the other cats. Okay, Boo. Boo's definitely a lap cap. 8.35 p.m. This is Boo's routine. I'm sitting here starting up my computer and everything. And he's made himself comfortable. He's going to take a little nap. Oh. Goes in tight, Boo. Maybe he's going to eat some of his food. I went to give Boo some treats and uh, he sliced my finger open with his claws. I don't know if you guys can see that. I know it's going to have a hard time focusing on it, but uh, thankfully it's not too deep and um, it is painful right now. I just washed it out, so um, I'm not happy with that. So he still needs to learn um, like when it comes to treats not to scratch. That's one thing he still scratches. If you try to give him treats, if your hands get in the way, he goes after your hands. So right now he needs to learn, um, like if someone wants to take a brush, not to scratch the hands. If someone wants to remove a remote control, not to scratch. Basically he's very possessive of things. I'm gonna put a band-aid on this. 9.30 p.m. Boo has moved down to the Carpooled cat scratcher. He's been sleeping on that for about a half hour. So Boo's decided he needs to lay on my lap. I'm trying to do videos on the computer, and Boo decides he needs to lay in my lap. Then he'll go lay next to me. Yep, that's his thing. He comes up here, he greets me, lays in my lap for like a few minutes. And then he'll sit next to me. And I hope that revolution's kicking in. It's just what it's supposed to be fully in a system by tomorrow. Right, Bo? Right, right. You take it easy, Boo. You need rest. Rest. Rest and heal, okay? Rest and heal. Heal your leg, Boo. Heal your leg. It is 7.30 a.m. Hello. You guys ready for breakfast? Who wants breakfast? Come on, Stella. We're eating downstairs. Who's eating? Who's eating today? Who's eating breakfast, huh? Who's having breakfast? Come on. Move over. Move over. So this is Boo's breakfast. Today it is some of the Nature's Variety Instinct Raw Bites and half a can of the Turkey Sheba Pate mixed in additional liquid. 
Good morning, Boo. Good morning, Boo. Good morning, Boo. Are you hungry? All of his bowls are completely lit clean. How you doing, Boo? Now, to be honest with you, this was my big concern today because yesterday I smelled no poop in this room at all. And um, last night when I went to bed, I heard him scratching on the litter box and I wondered what it would be like in here this morning. And I could honestly tell you that it doesn't smell bad in here at all. Like, I wouldn't even know that he made a poop if I didn't, like, look inside the litter box right now. See? It looks like he's used it. Now, the window was cracked open like one inch so there was some air circulation in here but I also think a lot of it is the strength of that cat litter that is the world's best cat litter the um, multi cat formula uh, the original there's no lavender in this one and um, yeah so today I have to clean out that litter box but I'm just really happy this room doesn't stink ready to eat are you ready to eat, Boo? How are you feeling today? Are you feeling better? You feeling better, Boo? Boo seems to be getting his energy back. He's not moving around in slow motion. Right, Boo? You feeling okay? You feeling okay? What you doing, Boo? I'm not feeding him right away because I want to see what he's going to do. I'm more interested in observing his behaviors right now. And he's being a good boy. Yep, that's his thing. He loves just laying up here. You happy cat, Boo? Okay, he, he wants to eat. He's letting me know I want to eat. It is 10 a.m. And I put this gate around Boo's door like this. And Stella's upstairs. She came up and then I shut the door behind her. So right now she's just wandering around. So I'm actually putting myself inside this little gate. I'm going to be on Boo's side. I just want to be on the side of the door. Hey, Boo. Move over. He ate all of his wet food. How are you, Boo? Want to see Stella? You want to see Stella, Boo? Okay. Want to be brushed? Maybe I'm going to calm him down first. I mean, he's very calm right now. But maybe I'll brush him a little bit. I'm gonna be brushed. Okay. He does that when he gets excited. Okay, good boy. Yeah, good boy, Boo. Like, I don't want to freak him out with the other cats. So I'm hoping this could just be, like, a gradual process. But, of course, you know, we have to keep in mind and realize that every time you plan something with feral cats, like, whenever you try to plan stuff, usually it never goes according to plan. Like, I did not plan for Boo to be in this room right now, or to have gone to the vet and for all this to happen. I mean, I think it worked out well. I think it actually worked out better than I could have ever planned. Um, so, I mean, that is one of the problems with making plans, is that sometimes if you just let things happen on their own, they happen better than you could have ever planned them. So, 
I don't know, I could be overly cautious right now with uh, trying to put the cats together. Um, it could work out really well. I do want to remind everyone that it has not even been a full year since Stella and the kittens have been living outside with Boo. So they were all living together uh, less than a year ago. So they should get along. I mean, they seem to have gotten along when they were living outside. They all ate together and everything. And I think one of the reasons why Boo has so many scars is because he was the protector. I mean, Stella and the kittens, like, they really never had injuries or anything when they were outside. And I think it's because Boo is the protector of that little tribe. So I'm really interested to see what happens you know, if he and Stella come across each other through the gate, you know, is Stella going to hiss? I mean, I'm, even if they get along, I'm still not going to, I'm still not going to let him out to mingle freely with her. Hey, boo. Um, I still want him to just hang out mostly in this room. Ideally for a few weeks. But again, as I'm saying this, what my plan is and what uh, the universe's plan is is completely different, so. Okay, boo. Okay, boo. You wanna see Stella? Would you like to see Stella? You wanna go see Stella? Boo, you wanna see Stella? Would you like to see Stella? Boo's fur, sometimes it feels like velvet. And he looks like Velvet. His name is Boo Velvet. Right, Boo? Okay. You done? You want to see Stella? Oh, you're not done? You want to go see Stella? Boo, you want to see your girlfriend? You want to see your girlfriend? See, every time I stop petting him, he like goes to my hand. He's like, keep petting me, keep petting me. Okay, boo. He doesn't have his claws out there. Well, that's a good thing. But he's trying to get to my hand. The brush is right there. He's not going to the brush. He's going to my hand. Hey! Nope. No scratch. We don't scratch. Boo. We be gentle, right? Gentle? Nice. We be nice, we be gentle. Okay, so Stella is like about eight feet away. She's laying on the ground right now. Here she comes. Here she comes. There she is looking. Looking and smelling. Hey Stella, who's that? Is that Boo? Do you recognize Boo? Right now Boo's eating. Stella! Oh, here's Boo. Look. Here's Boo near the gate. Uh-oh. Here's Boo. There's Stella. She's not looking too happy. Be nice! She's hissing. Be nice, Stella! Someone's growling. Be nice! Who's growling? Why are you growling? Be nice to Boo. Stella. Boo just ran back in the room because he's a smart cat. So Boo's over there. He's looking out the window. He's sitting on the scratcher. Stella has moved into the living room where she's hanging out. Maybe because Boo went back in the room. She's trying to figure out what's going on.
So I'm now back in the room. I'm sitting here with Boo and brushing him. The door is open, the gate is there, and Stella is not. She's like somewhere else in the house. I think she's in the living room. So Boo just wandered over to the gate. He's smelling around. Stella, I think he just saw Stella. Be careful, be good, good boy, don't jump, no jump. No jumping! Stella's hissing again. Who's growling? Stella's growling again. Stella's being nasty. Stella! That's your boyfriend! What are you doing? Potentially it's even her brother, because the vet has them as the exact same age from what they could tell when they examine them, you know, look at their teeth and everything. Okay, so Boo doesn't seem to care about Stella. He doesn't look like he's wanting to attack her or feeling threatened or anything. And Stella's staring him down. Stella! Stella! Now she's walking away. Okay, so Boo just jumped up by the windows. Now this one is slightly open. And this one is not, so I just opened that one a little bit also. I think it's good for them to get air. And I am going to leave the room right now and get some stuff done. So Stella's been just looking out the windows here in the living room. I mean, she seems fine now. I mean... She's just not happy to see Boo. Are you not happy to see Boo? You unhappy? You're not happy. I have this other pet gate here that I bought at PetSmart. It's a bit taller uh, than the one that I have between the upstairs and downstairs. Like this is much harder to hurdle. Um, so I have this here right now. If I leave the other cats upstairs, I just don't want them sticking their paws under the door and scratching it all up and everything and I don't know how much Boo's gonna do on the other side. Boo's really happy to be inside. I'm wondering what would happen if I took Stella's toy and put it here. I tried to play with her outside the door. So there's Stella and there's Boo. Right now she's smelling and she's not hissing or growling. Maybe because I'm on the side with the toy. Stella, you want to play? Okay, that was like a little bit of a hiss. She didn't expect Boo. Hey, Boo. Stella, Boo wants to play. He's not going to bother you. Hey, Boo. Boo has toys in there, Stella. Boo's playing with his toys. Boo says, I'm going to play with my toys. Come on, Stella. Stella loves like chasing behind things. I really like this white gate that I bought for a whole variety of reasons. This being one of them, because I figured that when I don't need to use it as a barrier between cats anymore, it could make um, you know some interesting playtime for the cats for you know stuff like this. Just because Stella likes going, she likes putting her paws through things. So right now she's playing with this. And I have no idea where Boo is. Boo wants to play. Estelle's gonna be mad because her toy smells like Boo. It's about 10.30 a.m. I just went outside and I gave Hydrox some wet food. He was hanging out on the patio. I went outside and he greeted me with a few meows. Boo is watching from his window. And Stella has been wandering around the upstairs like the diva that she is. So there's the gate. The gate is open right now because Boo is in the room with the litter box. And um, I was thinking maybe I'll just leave Stella up here 
and the other cat's downstairs and keep the door shut between them, but I can't do that because there's no other litter box up here. I'm not bringing one of the other litter boxes up here. So right now the gate's open. I don't think there's going to be an issue. Even if I leave the house and the three cats are upstairs, I do have the door to Boo's room gated off, and there's also like that draft dodger um, to try to keep their paws out from um, you know poking in there. So I think it would be fine, but I don't know. It is 10.50 a.m. Still is hanging out on top of the cat tower looking outside. She's pretty happy right now. Pooh's in his room. Splash and Simba are downstairs. I think they're taking a nap or they're both looking out the window down there. If they stay down there, it'll be really easy just to put Stella down there for the day when I leave. But if the three of them are upstairs, there's no way them could be able to wrangle all three of them downstairs. Unless maybe I bribe them with treats. So we'll see what happens. Today is mail day. I picked up a whole bunch of stuff at the post office. So let's open these packages and see what the cats got. And there's Stella. Checking them out. Ooh, we got a Petco gift card, $25. That is so awesome. And then it says, Hi, Lucky. Enjoy the gift to your amazing kitties. I love them all. Thanks for the awesome videos. Peace, Jennifer J. And here's the Petco gift card. Thank you so much, Jennifer J. This will definitely come in handy. I need to go buy some raw food for the inside cats. This will be great for that. Okay, what do we have in this box? Ooh, we have Stella's favorite scented laundry soap. This is the, um, the same uh, soap that I use in the shower. They have Zoom, Frankincense, and Myrrh uh, bar soap. And now here is the laundry soap. So every time that I do uh, the laundry for the cats, their towels and blankets that they lay on, I could use this soap and she is going to love it. And this says that it's handmade with essential oils and it's free of sulfates and phosphates. So I'm really excited to use this. And this says, hi Lucky Ferals, enjoy your gift from Blue Hair. I have two boos. Love the videos. Thank you so much, Blue Hair. Okay, now we have this bag. Let's see what's in here. It is a perfect arch self groomer and massager all in one helps stop shedding and scratching to keep your home hair free durable bristles designed to remove loose shedding hair while stimulating your cat with a massage super sturdy carpet base is perfect for scratching now we all know who is going to love this perfect arch boo is going to have a ball with this well hopefully let's hope and unfortunately this did not come with any little notes in it so I don't know who sent this but whoever sent it thank you so much this is awesome it says one attach bristle arch two sprinkle catnip on carpet or in base three keep kitty entertained for hours care instructions remove hair using a vacuum cleaner spot clean with a soft cloth moistened with warm water and air dry catnip treat base with catnip every few months to use either sprinkle catnip on carpet or turn base upside down and place catnip in center hole. Includes carpet base with non-slip rubber feet, brit bristle arch, and one bag of catnip. So this will be awesome. And here's Stella keeping an eye on me. She likes to think she's the boss. Okay, and then we have this package. This is the last package. Hey Stella! Hello Stella! What is it, Stella? What is it, Stella? 
Ooh, it is a slicker brush. It says you can reduce shedding up to 90% groomer quality guaranteed for five years. This is really cool. Um, reduces pet hair shedding by up to 90% by removing dead and loose undercoat while leaving the top coat damage free. Patented design, stainless steel pins, gently remove dead hair mats and tangles, and then retract for easy cleanup. Guaranteed for a full five years against breakage. Works great on long and short haired pets. Regular brushing helps bring natural oils to the top for a healthy and shiny coat. Helps eliminate hairballs in cats. So, I think Boo like this, but um, I think this could be good for the inside cats too. So check this out. So here's the brush, right? And this is what it looks like. And I'm like, wait a minute, there's no bristles on it. Stella wants to be brushed. And then check this out. So then here, there's this button here and the bristles come out. So you could brush them and then retract it. Oh, and it stays, look, and they stay. And then when you're done, you retract the bristles and then like all the hair just wipes off. So let's try this, let's try this on Stella. Stella, can I brush you? Stella's sitting on her scratch and roll. I'm going to use the new brush on her. I'm going very gently. Very gently, Stella. Very gently. Gently. Do you like being brushed, Stella? It's going to look pretty for Boo, right? She seems to actually be liking it. But usually she'll like try to jump away. Okay, Stella. We done? Wow, wow. Do you guys see all that hair? So here's the brush with all the hair. And then I just got myself a napkin, so let's see. Let's see what happens if we retract the bristles. And all the hair is still there. Oh my God, how awesome. There's all the cat fur, and here's the brush, perfectly clean. Look at that. And it clicks in. And we're ready to go on to the next cat. I love this. And unfortunately, this one does not have a note in it either. But thank you to whoever sent this brush to the cats. Uh, this is going to be awesome. I was downstairs with the other cats and I heard all this noise up in this room. And I realized uh, Boo was scratching himself on the scratcher. I don't know what else he was doing. Hey, Boo. How are you? Sometimes his eyes look really green, but they're really more like a golden color. Hello, Boo. Hey, Boo. Boo, I gotta go. I gotta go. It is 8.13 p.m. I'm just getting home. Hey, Boo. What are you doing, Boo? What you doing, Boo? Okay. This live stream has been streaming black. Con content issues detected. Okay, so it looks like there's still people here on the chat. It says, yeah, looks like there's still people here. 81, oh my gosh, 81 people. Um, I just wrote, hi, I have to stop the stream and use this computer to edit videos. Thanks for watching. Thanks for watching, guys. I don't know if you could hear me or not, but, um, yeah. I'll, uh, I'll try to stream again tomorrow. I hope you enjoyed it. Okay, let's see who's still on here. Okay, who's on all the way to the end? Vidalia, Juanita Brown, Jay Red, Mike Day, Re, Owly Cat, 
would be a Raman, Jay Red, Vidalia, the the Guinness, Mike Day, Richard Dower, Lee Corner, Judy Kirk, and Bear for Freedom. Thanks for watching, guys. So here's Boo. He pretty much just slept all day. Well, at least every time I checked in on the live stream, he was sleeping. Right, Boo? I think he just slept under the love seat all day. Okay, Boo, I'll get you some food, okay? I'll be back. Give me some time. Boo is such a happy boy right now. You a happy boy, Boo? Boo, are you a happy boy? Are you a happy boy? Okay, yeah, Boo, you're a happy boy. Come on. I'm going to go feed the other cats, and then I'll come back and hang out with you, okay? I know you're lonely. You've been by yourself all day. Okay? I'll come back and hang out with you, okay? Okay. Give me, uh, I don't know, 10 or 20 minutes, okay? Okay, hang out. Okay, so it looks like I forgot to defrost raw food for dinner. So they're all going to get canned food. So I'm downstairs just about to feed Stella, Splash, and Simba. And um, I hope they accept Boo back into the family. Because that would be pretty horrible for him if they didn't. You know, because they all eat together and hang out together. Let's hope they accept him back. So today I am going to give them this Nature's Variety Instinct Chicken Formula. Uh, they've never had this before. I don't know if they're going to like it or not. Let's hope they do because this is good food. 95% chicken, turkey, and liver. 5% vegetables, fruits, and wholesome ingredients. 0% grain and gluten. Uh, the first ingredients are chicken, turkey, chicken liver, chicken broth, ground flaxseed, montmorillonite clay, eggs, peas, carrots, dried kelp, and then a bunch of vitamins and minerals. Let's see if they'll eat it. Right now, Stella's eating it, but... Stella likes cat food. She likes to try all different kinds of cat food. She likes to taste food. But I don't know how much of this food they're actually going to eat. Feeding raw food versus cooked food uh, definitely makes a difference. I know for myself, like today, uh, I had a raw breakfast and I had a raw lunch. And then I had a cooked dinner, and uh, I'm totally feeling that cooked dinner right now. Like, you don't realize how dehydrating cooked food is until you eat mostly raw food. And then every time you eat cooked food, you really, you really notice the difference. Simba looks like he's not having any of it. And Splash, maybe they'll come back and eat it, maybe not. I'll give them some dry food because they do like the dry food. Splash is probably going to go eat the dry food because he likes the dry food. So it ends up that Stella is really just licking up all of the liquid that I put in there. I always add additional water. So I'm actually going to add even more water. I have like half a can of water here. Just because I think she doesn't get enough fluids. These two are not too happy with dinner. But they have dry food to eat and they could obviously eat this canned food. There's nothing wrong with this canned food. Most cats would love to have this canned food. But these ones have turned into food snobs. It's dark out already and um, I don't see Hydrox anywhere. I don't hear him meowing or anything. There is still dry food in the feeder. Um, so I'm not going to give him any more food. I don't even like the fact that there's dry food in the feeder right now. Because that means the raccoons and skunks and possums and everyone's going to get to that food. Maybe I'll scoop some of it out. Okay, so Boo has his wet food and he has his dry food and he has some fresh water. And Boo has been a really, really good boy. So Boo has officially been inside for five full days now. It's kind of crazy, like he does not want to go out at all. Okay guys, there's a problem here. Every time Boo uses this litter, I mean he's covered in it. Look, look at his face. He's covered in this litter. Come here Boo. 
You see him? So, for those of you who have black cats, what kind of litter do you use? Because this litter's crazy. I mean, I don't notice any of that on any of the other cats, and it's the same litter. So I put this gate up again, like a corral, and Simba's up here now also. He was just smelling the gate, and now he's just kind of walking around, rubbing on things. Yeah, then he just went in another room. So Simba is like not even concerned with what is going on in this room. It's crazy. And Boo doesn't even seem to care much either. But he did just make a very stinky poop, so now I have to go out again and get like a bag and the scoop and get rid of it. Okay, so Stella just walked by the gate and she doesn't care. And then here's Simba. I don't know if he sees Boo, if he doesn't see Boo. It looks like he sees Boo. So what I do is I shut the door behind me and this is one of those standalone gates so then I can easily just kind of like let myself out. and then just shut it behind me again. The reason why I want to keep this here, I just want to keep the cats from putting their paws under the door. That might freak Boo out. Boo ate all of his wet food, a whole can of Sheba, and some of his dry food. So Boo's near the gate, and there's Simba near the gate, and it's dark, and they're smelling each other. Right now there's no hissing. Simba seems okay, his tail's up. He's rubbing against the gate. He seems okay. But Boo looks like he has no interest. Boo would rather groom himself. Hey Simba. Hello Simba. You hanging out? You hanging out? What you doing Simba? Yeah, he doesn't look threatened by Boo at all. There's Boo. Do you want to see Simba? You want to see Simba? Boo doesn't care about Simba. Boo just wants to sit on the love seat. Okay, so I'm trying to edit a video. And Boo is laying in my lap. I took the camera out and he moves. He's purring. He's very happy. Very happy right now. He likes to nap. He likes it when I sit here and edit videos and then he takes a little nap. But he napped like all day. He says, brush my belly. Brush my belly. Really purring. Okay. So, once again, I'm trying to edit a video, and Boo has decided he needs to sit on my lap. Boo is becoming a lap cat. I've never had a lap cat before. Like, he literally just crawls into my lap and says, okay, I'm sitting here now.
There's a cat on the other side of the wall playing with something. That's the noise. Okay, boo. I gotta get some work done, okay? Okay, boo. Let's get some work done. Okay? Wanna get some work done? Okay. I'm sitting here editing this video, and Hydrox is in the video, and Hydrox meows in the video, and Boo just jumped off the love seat where he was laying next to me, and flew to the window. And right now he's looking for Hydrox. Just from hearing him meow on the video. So now I feel like I have to close this window because Boo might want to get out and go after Hydrox. All right, guys, I'm going to replay this so you can see what's going on. Ready? Want a meeting stick? Isn't that crazy? Boo's looking all over for Hydrox. It's midnight right now. And I'd like to go to bed. But Boo has been laying on my lap. And he doesn't want to move. He's all sprawled out. 